like this in worship, let me tell you this. You will turn back and many challenges that would have been distractions, you will not find them again. This, this is the protocol of his presence. Yours is to be willing to invest. It's called the sacrifice of praise. Then you will find miracles. Then you will find open doors. Even things you need that you do not know. Yours is to create the atmosphere for him to come. When he comes, he never comes alone. He comes with your prayer requests. He comes with answers. A harvest of them. This is how we rise in this kingdom. Many of the things that we pray and we ask for can be resolved if we understand the art of worship. This is true. Hallelujah. For someone here, I'm praying for you that the first impartation you will receive tonight is a hunger for the secret place. In the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God. That the Lord will grant us grace to minimize these mundane distractions and the deception of tea and bread. God is not stupid. He said the Gentiles run after these things and your heavenly father knows that you have need of them. Any father that cannot cater for his family, the Bible says he has denied the faith and he's worse than an infidel. Yours is to stay and say, Lord, I have needs, but I stay. This is how he builds us. We stay. When we stay, we contact genuine power. When we stay, we contact wisdom. One idea fired from heaven to your secret place can save you decades of shame, decades of reproach. He says it is vain to wake up in the morning and to sleep late in the night only to eat the bread of sorrow. If it is not the Lord that builds that house, I assure you they labor in vain. If it's not the one that watches over the city, the watchman watches but in vain. We know that thou art a man sent from God, for no man can do these things except God be with him. Father, we rededicate our lives again and we declare that we will never be too busy for your presence. Take away all the distractions that interrupt our fellowship. Take away the distractions, the lies that the devil tells us that when we give you so much time is at the detriment of our success. Take away that deception from us. Help us to know and to see the value of your presence. The value of your presence. And tonight we have come to pray, to receive, to learn, to be mentored, to be discipled, to grow. To superior versions of ourselves grant us illumination by your spirit in the name of jesus christ amen and amen god bless you thank you for your sacrifice please be seated tonight i want you to be very sensitive it's a very prophetic meeting i really believe with all my heart that whilst i teach you be for a short time that the power of god this week and next week I believe there's something extraordinary God is doing every service is spectacular but there is always something God is doing praise the name of the Lord There is a woman who came here whilst you saw the woman who was testifying about a baby. You are in the main auditorium here. Um, you came here trusting God for the fruit of the womb. This is what I'm seeing this in my vision. Just help those under the anointing and let's, let's pay attention. The Lord is showing me a woman. I'm not giving any particular time, but I'm seeing that there is a woman who you are in this auditorium right now. You came here and one of your requests, while, especially whilst you heard 
the our dear sister who was testifying about the miracle of the fruit of the womb you were praying and say lord how that you would do this for me please who is that person i want to pray for you now the lord is giving me i believe in miracles i truly believe in miracles the church is a solution center we do not waste the time of god's people every time invested in his presence has value always just those inside you don't have to those at the overflows you can connect by faith please just place your hand by faith on your stomach believe in god Don't worry about what the medical report is. Just do what I'm asking you to do. Place your hand there believing. He that cometh unto God must believe that he exists. You will marvel and wonder at the testimonies that will arise from this. Truly God is powerful. It's just that we don't give him time to build us, to work on us, and to deposit genuine power upon and over our lives very quickly please let's walk with time if you're coming please come stand i just feel felt stirred the power of the holy ghost is strong upon this place i'm seeing a wind just from my left to my right just moving across and the lord is bringing testimonies correcting medical conditions the word of god the bible declares is quick and powerful and and dislodging demons and wicked spirits that have been masquerading as all kinds of fertility issues. They are devils and they are spirits. And I cast them out by the Spirit of God. Let God's people go now. Any spirit that is back of this delay in conception, it doesn't matter whether, whether you have a womb or not, whether there is a problem with it or not, that's not what we are praying. We are declaring in the name of Jesus Christ that every spirit that is back of this this situation, this reproach by the power that raised Christ from the dead we declare in the name of Jesus Christ that they leave you once and for all in the mighty name of Jesus Christ and now I minister life let there be life life to every dead organ life to every dead womb every malfunctioning ill functioning womb hear the word of the lord we correct that anomaly by the power that raised christ from the dead and in the name of jesus i declare unto you according to the time of life return with your miracle children according to the time of life return with your miracle children in the name of jesus christ let the sound of rejoicing never depart from your habitation that those who have laughed with you they will come and they will celebrate and rejoice with you this we decree this we declare and because you believe it we declare it established in the name of jesus christ god bless you please go and return with your testimonies hallelujah let's celebrate jesus Just help those under the anointing. Witnesses, part one. Witnesses, part one. We're examining a two part series today and next week on the topic witnesses. Classification by identification. That means the classification that attempts to describe our oneness with Christ. The product of what he has done and the oneness that we now enjoy. So there is classification based on identification. A few scriptures. Let's run through a few scriptures we are studying the Bible now. Romans chapter 8. Please help us media from verse 16. Romans 8, 16 to 18 tells us clearly that the Spirit itself bears witness with our spirits that we are the children of God. You see that now. It says, and if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. 
So the Bible tells us that we are heirs of God and even joint heirs with Christ. Second Peter chapter 1, popular scripture, when we read from verse 3 and 4, the Bible says that we have been made um, according as His divine power has given us unto us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of Him that has called us into glory and virtue. Verse 4 says, Whereby are given to us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these ye might be partakers of His divine nature. We are called partakers of His divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. 2 Corinthians 5 and verse 17 tells us, it says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Galatians 4 and verse 7, be patient as I run through these scriptures. Establishing our identification. Believers are classified according to identification. It says, wherefore... Thou art no more a servant, but a son. And if a son, then an heir of God, even through Christ. Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21, calls us the righteousness of God in Christ. It says, For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in Christ. Ephesians chapter 2, the most probably, the most classic rendition from verse 1 of our, a thorough theological exegesis of our oneness with Christ. And you have he quickened, the Bible says, who were dead in trespasses and sins, we're reading to verse 6. Wherein in time past he walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now walketh in the children of disobedience. Among whom also we had our conversation in times past in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, even as others. Hallelujah, verse 4. It says, But God, who is rich in mercy for his great love, wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, pay attention, had quickened us together with Christ. For by grace are ye saved. Verse 6, it says, and had raised us up, say amen, amen, together and made us to sit in heavenly places in Christ. Now please listen. These are the fundamentals of our curriculum for growth and maturity. You have to know who you are in Christ. And that this classification is based on our identification. Are we together now? A number of other scriptures, but these ones have, have given us sufficient to show us from different angles how that we have been joined to Christ. But then the second classification is based on our function. An assignment. So the first classification is based on our identification. But the second classification is based on our function and our assignment. A few scriptures. Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 10. Now you see what we are called. Now the description begins to change. According to functions. For we are his workmanship. Created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God had before ordained that we should walk in them. So we are not only joint heirs, we are not only sons of God, we are his workmanship. Matthew chapter 14, chap Matthew chapter 5, from verse 14 to 16, Jesus is teaching now. Ye are the light of the world. Here's another name we are called, according to function, we are light. A city, he says, that is set on a hill that cannot be hid. Next verse. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light to all that are in the house. Last verse. It says, let your light shine before men, that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. When you begin to read from verse 13, it tells us you are the salt of the earth, he says. 
that if the salt has lost its saltiness or its savor, wherewith shall it be salted again? It is no good except to be thrown on a foot and trampled by men. So he calls us light. He calls us salt. John 15 and verse 16. John 15 and verse 16. It says, Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you. This is no strange word to us here. To ordain means to commission, to authorize, to legitimize. That ye should go forth and bring forth fruit. He calls us fruit bearers. And that your fruit should remain. Our classification according to functions. Second Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 20. Second Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 20. The Bible says, now then, we are ambassadors. Hallelujah. So, you're not only a son or a daughter. You're not only joint heir. He says we are ambassadors, representatives for Christ. Revelation chapter 5 and verse 10. And has made us unto our God kings and priests and we shall reign. So here the Bible calls believers kings, calls believers priests. Last scripture, 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 9. Very classic rendition. It says, but ye are a chosen generation. Now, look the names now. A chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people, the Bible says, mandated to show forth the praises of him who had called us out of darkness and into his marvelous light. So the Bible calls believers different names according to identification, our oneness with Christ, and according to our functions. According to 1 John chapter 1, the Gospel of John, John chapter 1 from verse 6, the Bible uses a very interesting expression that we would find being used consistent in Scripture, right to Revelation. It says there was a man sent from God, his name was John. The Bible never says here, interestingly, that that man was a Baptist. Scripture does not even recognize him as a Baptist. The Bible does not even say he was a prophet. The first description given according to John's synoptic account of this man who we later would call the Baptist, would later call a prophet was a witness. The same John came for a witness. His assignment to bear witness to the light that through his witness all men might believe. Here was John's assignment. John did not come to prophesy. John did not come to use water. He came for a witness. Acts chapter 1 and verse 8. We're discussing being a witness now. Jesus, this was Jesus after his resurrection. The Bible says he tarried with them again for a period of 40 days. Teaching them the matters or the things that pertain unto the kingdom. And here he was having his final words with them so that he would levitate to heaven. And he was talking about the restoration of the nation of Israel. And they asked him a question. They said, would you at this time restore the nation of Israel? He said, it is not for you to know the times and the seasons that the Father has put within his care. Verse 8, but you shall receive power. After that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. And to the end that ye shall be. Now he uses the same term for John, for the church. Jesus calls us witnesses unto me. Then he begins to define the geography of witness. Both in Jerusalem and in Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. Revelation chapter 1 from verse 1. 
the revelation of Jesus Christ which God gave unto him to show unto his servant things which must surely come to pass and he sent and signified it by his angel unto John we're reading to say 5 or 6 the key verse is verse 5 but let's read on who bear record of the word of God listen carefully and the testimony of Jesus Christ and of all things that he saw verse 3 blessed is he that readeth and that hear the words of this prophecy say I am blessed and keep those things which are written therein for the time is at hand verse 4 it says John unto the seven churches which are in Asia grace be unto you and peace from him which is and which was and which is to come and from the seven spirits which are before his throne verse 5 read with me please if you are a Christian ready one to read and from Jesus Christ who is the hold on Jesus here is called himself a faithful witness a witness that was faithful to the latter Jesus himself is called witness there are not many times when the bible uses the same description for jesus for believers for instance god is light believers are also called light are we together yes now here jesus is called the faithful witness the same way he called us validating the fact that he said as he is so are we in this life a witness we are witnesses now write this down please who is a witness what does it mean to be a witness please pay attention remember that every time we converge and we gather the primary assignment of a true shepherd is to mentor to teach to train to raise to build to supply the spiritual meal of knowledge and understanding hallelujah a witness very interesting dictionary definition is one who has knowledge about a matter one who sees an event happening is called a witness if you get this description it should trouble you immediately a witness is one who has knowledge about a matter a dictionary definition one who sees an event happening so how in the world do we qualify to be witnesses when physically speaking we were not there more than two thousand years ago jesus came he died and now we are proposing an idea and according to the dictionary definition it says a witness is one who should have been there to have seen that event this is my definition of a witness a witness is a validator of a claim a witness is a validator of a claim another definition a witness is one who provides testimonial evidence of what he or she claims to know a witness is one who provides testimonial evidence this is a legal expression one who provides testimonial evidence of what he or she claims to know is a witness so a witness is a validator of a claim usually in legal terms now a witness is not needed until there is a contention of a claim is that true you do not need a witness in the court of law we have judges here and magistrates bless your heart and when you go to the court of law you do not need a witness until and except and unless there is a contention over a claim then you introduce a witness watch this now a witness is a validator of a claim so if jesus said 
the Spirit of God comes upon you, you shall be witnesses. That means that we are mandated to be validators of certain claims that he made. For instance, he said he was the Son of God. For instance, he said God is love. For instance, he said it is not the Father's will that all men should perish. There are many, many claims that Jesus made. God made from scripture. Jesus came as the express image of the Father. And he buttressed on those claims. And Jesus left the disciples with a warning and a caution. That there are men and there are forces on earth. That will spend their life investing their moment, their days, their intelligence. To devalidate those claims. And he said, there are many scattered across your region. From Jerusalem, he said, to Samaria, to Judea, to the uttermost part of the earth. I am mandating you to spread yourselves across the length and breadth of this side of my kingdom. With a singular assignment to prove that everything I said is not a lie. Witness this. Are we together? So a witness has an assignment of validating claims. The reason why we need to teach this is because the average believer does not really understand the responsibility dimension of being in the faith life. Largely speaking, our, our theology ends just in an appreciation of what Jesus did on the cross and then the fact that there are all kinds of blessings accorded us by reason of his death, burial, and resurrection. And that is correct. But there are responsibilities in this kingdom. And the primary responsibility of a believer is not to be a businessman. Listen carefully. It's not to be a man of God. It's not to be a pilot, an engineer. Many times we define ourselves by the geography of the witness, not the revelation of the witness. We are going to be discussing that most of the things we call ourselves, I am an apostle, I am a prophet, I am a banker, a CEO, I am a judge, I am a politician. Those are not the things and the people that we are. Those are just the geography of the witness. Regardless the geography, the assignment is the same. Step into that system and you have an assignment to not rest until that system comes under the governing influence. Until the claims of Jesus is received and institutionalized within that sphere, you are not done. Are we together? Witnesses. Everybody say, I'm a witness. Here's the average believer's understanding about the faith life. If you're born again and you're fortunate to be led and mentored by a pastor that has sufficient spiritual understanding as far as scripture and doctrine is concerned, then you are taught and mentored along the lines of your rights in Christ and so on and so forth. And when you know that, then we get busy with our lives, isolating them from our faith life. So this is church and this is God's thing. Are we together now? So from Monday down till Saturday or whatever non-church day, we believe that God stay out of my business. I'm trying to build a career. I'm trying to raise children. I'm trying to get married. I'm trying to have children. I'm trying to have a business. I'm trying to make money. I'm trying to survive in Nigeria, we say. And so we have created a dichotomy that when it has to do with the things of God, we do it when we come to church, we sing praises, we fall under the anointing, we stand up, we learn, we share fellowship, and then we go back to what we call our normal lives. The Bible never teaches that. There is no dichotomy. Your primary assignment here, God is not Caesar. Don't say give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar. God is the owner of everything. If you give to Caesar, give to Caesar. But God is not Caesar. He's either his Lord of everything. Or his Lord of nothing at all. So there is no such thing as church and then my life. No. Your life is interwoven into one singular assignment. You are a witness. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Witness. On dreams, a witness. On suit, witness. 
Are we together? Now, pay attention, please. If you do not understand this and you create a dichotomy to your Christian experience, you will, number one, give the devil room to shred the other non-church parts of your life in pieces. He will occupy you and waste your time. So you find people say, oh God, hold on, I'm trying to make ends meet. And God says, who created this dichotomy? You go and read your Bible. There was no such thing as God's affair and our affair. All the people who had alternatives were idol worshippers and they paid for it. Or backsliding believers. When the Jews fell apart and they left God, they went back to their own thing. Read the Bible. There's only one subject, one pursuit, kingdom. That was why they had children, kingdom. That was why they married, kingdom. That was why they lived well, kingdom. That was why God showed up, kingdom. That was why they prospered, kingdom. That was why they multiplied, kingdom. Now we have kingdom and other things. The other things God took time to warn us about. Is the reason why we don't have time. The time 24 hours was calculated to be enough if your focus is kingdom. The moment you add something outside of God's original design, time will never be enough. Please pay attention. He calls us witnesses. So here's what we do. We believe the only spiritual time and moment in our life is when we are having a devotional in the morning or when we are praying or when we are fasting. The moment we say in Jesus name and say amen, what we mean is God have given you your quota. Allow me do whatever I want to do. If there's any need for emergency, you just hang on. I will call on you to help in my affair. And now he's watching. No wonder Many people live lives that seem to have a semblance of success. And then after many years of toiling and laboring, we end up in frustration, carry all kinds of diseases and sicknesses that come from worry. We are angry, we are frustrated because we think that God scammed us and used us for his agenda. And did not give us a portion for our own agenda. It's one of the number one reasons why people are afraid of giving God everything. They suspect He will interrupt their agenda. And He will. Are we blessed tonight? Witnesses. Let me tell you this. According to scripture, everything in a believer's life Every moment, every activity must synergize itself to one goal, one goal, one goal. Being a witness, validating a claim, revealing Jesus and bringing glory to Him. Can I tell you this? Your life will find such joy when everything about you is connected to being a witness, connected to the revelation of Jesus, connected to kingdom come. Now, when you are trying to trust God, for resources and your motive is that you will be an effective witness there's no need to be ashamed of it you can now pray with boldness lord bless me and open doors for me to be a millionaire and a billionaire do you know why because you can defend that desire if they ask you, why do you like money? Say, no, 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 don't mistake me. It is not a blind pursuit for money. I have found out that the nature of my witness requires that there should be sufficient resources. And so like a faithful person in pursuit of being an effective witness, my first assignment based on the job description is to be a billionaire. Now you can stand tall. And you are not just a money monger because your pursuit is connected to kingdom come. Are we together now? There are people who the geography of your witness, for instance, requires that you are in government. If we ask you, why are you pushing the issue of politics? Why does it look like a do or die affair? If you tell us, look, all my life, I just sense I'm a politician. That may be a sufficient sociological reason. From, from the kingdom standpoint, there is no justification for that pursuit. 
Let me tell you this. The condition to secure God's commitment is that behind the desire for your activity, there must be a revelation and a motivation that I am a witness. As a man of God, why do you want a crowd of so many people? I think it's so that I, it will be that I'm anointed. No. God does not do business that way. A witness, a validator. You see, let me tell you this, brothers and sisters, people of God. The reason why it looks like God does not answer many prayers is because He vets the motivation behind them. Not just what you are asking for or seeking for. Remember, it does not take God time to bless, to lift, to change. It is the corruption of our motive that makes it seem as if his ears are deafened to our prayers. So when you say, God, give me something, he does not just say, okay, I died for you, take. He's not a stupid God. Just because he's love does not mean he's a fool. He moves at the backside of your desire and vets and checks the motivation. And he finds out that there is such a blind, carnal desire to prove a point, to do all sorts of things. And he says, no, the urgency of my assignment and the desire for witness will not allow me to invest in this corrupted motive. Your first assignment, therefore, would be to purify your motive, to align it to kingdom come. Is God helping us? You know why Jesus was called the faithful witness? The faithfulness part there was because when he came, even though he was the word, he had no business pursuing any agenda of his. From day one... At age 12, when his colleagues were jumping around and trying to understand how their environment was, Jesus was about his father's business. That's what made him a faithful witness. At the height of his fame, when many of us would not even survive the things that come with that level of honor, he was careful to say, I do not do the will of myself, he says. I only do what I see my father do. What level of submission and brokenness and total surrender. No wonder the father said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. You have become my thoughts and my intentions in action. Everybody say, I am a witness. A validator of a claim. Satan, look up please, and his cohorts, demons, have created systems and structures to see to it that Jesus Christ and the reality of his lordship is not understood and is not enthroned in the hearts of men and across every strata of human activities. They have used all kinds of strategies. Remember when Jesus resurrected? The first strategy was to use money and pay people. And say, just say the disciples came and carried his body. It's still the strategy till today. Satan will pay and do anything provided you will switch and change your assignment. And listen, if you do not understand this teaching, we will keep having piles of people in the church and we will lose the potency of the power of God and the ability to transform society with the gospel. A witness. So if there are five politicians, whilst all of them are celebrating election, and this one is saying, I won PDP, I won APC, I won this one, and everybody is celebrating and saying all sorts of things, you return back and you are not party conscious, you are assignment conscious. You see that now. Now that you are there, you don't just sit down and say, now I've suffered, my first assignment is to recover every money that I've had, the years that the canker worm and the caterpillar has stolen. No, sir. No, sir. That is a mindset that is not kingdom. See, when we talk about defending God's interests, 
We are not talking about being a fanatic. God's interest is not for Christians alone. God's interest is for all men. You, if you don't understand God's interest, it will look like some negative tribal or partisan kind of thing. No. God's interest is the secret to peace. is the secret to joy and development. If you truly pursue God's interest, all and sundry will benefit from your leadership. Not just for politics, but for everyone. You have to know the God whose interest you want to defend. He is love, He is light, He loves all men. This is the one whose interest you are defending. Are we blessed tonight? Yes. I live my entire life conscious of the fact that I am a witness. And if I ever will be involved in anything, I have to find kingdom come in it. If kingdom come is not represented, I am not interested. It's as simple and as honest as that. Can I tell you this? We must get to a point in our lives where everything we do, everything we do, is not just that we are believers, but we are passionately, we are indoctrinated with this revelation that God is depending on me to validate something about him. He's using me like a painter's canvas and a brush. There is something the world does not know about him. There is a lot of misrepresentation about God and he sends you. Go and correct that perception. So in the business world, for instance, they make all kinds of statements like, until you cut corners, you cannot prosper. And yet the Bible says God can help men prosper in the dignity of kingdom integrity. But that confusion remains in that space because there are no witnesses. So God would have to raise men. The generic name is being a witness, but he will push you to the geography of your assignment. More on that next week. But my assignment today is to wake you up from just the consciousness of CEO, the consciousness of apostle, prophet, the name he calls us, witness. I'm a witness. You are a witness, a validator. So anywhere I see the name of the Lord going down the drain, don't say it's none of my business. My, that is exactly my business. It is my assignment to walk in partnership with the wisdom of the Spirit and devise a strategy to correct that narrative. So if I hear people say, God does not heal again, God does not help people again, aha, my ears are eating because you are calling my name there. If I hear that people serve God and go down, there is no dignity serving God. It does not pay to serve Jesus. Uh -uh, uh -uh. There is a misrepresentation of the Father's intention. You must fraternize with Satan for you to be a gospel artist or an artist or whatever to go far. You must fraternize with powers. You must bow down to spirits. Then your ears are itching. No. And God says, let me use you as a, as a, as a sample to show men that you can rise. Let me tell you this. You have not yet seen the power of God until you are ready to be a witness. You have not yet seen the favor of God. You have not yet seen His ability to shift systems and structures until you are ready to be a witness. A witness has a point to prove. Not your point. God's point. Let me tell you how the nature of our witness is. For a long time, God will keep quiet so that the accusation will be clear. Do not mistake in God's silence. God's silence is a strategy that every time they say no one rises in this family, let's go back and serve idols and he seems to keep quiet. And you are saying, God, move now. Uh -uh. That's not how he walks. He keeps quiet. Because in his realm, time does not matter. In one day, he can do anything. Your entire lifetime is less than a day. So when you say, God, hurry up, he says, I don't understand that language. Hurry means what? Eternity minus five years does not mean anything to him. So he keeps quiet. Listen carefully. When it's time for him to arise, when he prepares the witness, 
he will give that witness something in the court of law that is called a token of truthfulness. The name is evidence. When you see God silent, it is because he is preparing his evidence. A witness is useless in the court of law if you do not come with evidence. Your evidence is a token of truthfulness. The Bible says the end of all strife is when you bring a token of truthfulness. Hmm. One who provides a testimonial evidence of what he or she claims to know. Sit down and write this please. What is an evidence? An evidence is anything presented in support or defense of an assertion. An evidence is anything presented in support or defense of an assertion. An evidence is anything presented in support or defense of an assertion. An evidence is a means of establishing the validity of a fact. Please write it down. An evidence is a means of establishing the validity of a fact. Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 16. Hebrews 6 and verse 16. For verily men swear by the greater and an oath of confirmation is to them an end of all strife. This is another name for evidence. It's called an oath of confirmation. You stole my money. Do you have a witness? Yes. Go and bring the witness. Whoever, come. Were you there? Yes. Did you see it? Yes. What is your evidence? That's the next question. Woe betimes a witness who does not have an evidence. It takes time. As security people, it takes time to build an evidence. So all the journey, all your experience is good and bad. All the painful things, the things that the Bible says we know that all things work together. It is a journey of building the evidence to your witness. All the times of pain, the times of prayer in the night that looks like God is not answering you. God, why are you silent? He said, you don't know the case you are sent to defend. That's why you don't know the kind of witness I have to build. Two years may not build that kind of case. Halabarakatosiata. You are supposed to present God to a family that has believed in idols for 150 years. Oh Moses, a rod will not be enough. Pharaoh is a wizard. A rod will not convince Pharaoh enough. You will need a rod. You will need signs and wonders. You will need miracles of nature. You will even need his firstborn. Please sit down. Hear me. God is calling you into ministry. And after 10 years, you are saying, Lord, release me. He says, stay. Just keep praying. God, what is it about my own ministry? My colleagues have gone ahead. Stay. Don't go anywhere. Let me tell you, he's building evidence. There is a level of power and grace that will come upon your life when he shoots you like an arrow. In one day, you will do what has not been done in one year. Hold on. Not everything in your life that looks negative is negative. It's the building of the evidence. Hold on. Do you know sometimes, as the people who work with CIA and intelligence, for them to build evidence, sometimes they will have to subject themselves to be part of the problem in disguise. Is that true? Could that be why you came from the family you came from? Could that be why when things were working for others, it didn't work for you? God had to... How else will they believe God lives if you did not pass through such a thing? So he started... Follow the prophetic drama your life has been acting that you are not seeing. 
sin one. Both parents go to be with the Lord from your birth. And you are wondering, Lord, why is my life like this? And heaven, the script writer, my goodness, the script writer is writing. And just when the car would have hit you, when you said Jesus is left, and you thought, no, 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 it's part of the whole thing. A day will come when you stand and say, Jesus is Lord. If anyone dares to say two feet, you're going to ask them, I hope you have time. Because I have an overwhelming evidence. So choose which one you want to see. Is it the fact that he lifted me from the married clay? Is it from the fact that he blessed me in the midst of my enemies? Is it from the fact that he waited for every negative prophecy to finish? Then he started changing it one by one in the presence of everyone. Is it that he took me to a foreign land and blessed me there? Which of the evidences do you need that is alive? And heaven stands to say, my goodness, my God, what a witness. What a witness indeed. What a witness indeed. As a man of God, hear me. Do not interpret things from a carnal standpoint. It takes time to build evidence. The stronger the evidence, the more effective the witness. So Jesus said, the ultimate evidence that I am from God, destroy this temple after three days. Since death is the last enemy that can be destroyed in your realm. If I say I am Lord, you will not believe it. Whoever owns the earth must be able to exit out of the earth and return himself back. So take my life. If I come back, then we'll see. And they said, with all pleasure, we even release an armed robber for your sake. We've been planning to kill you now that you've offered yourself with Jesus' joy. When he hung upon that cross, he didn't hang for five minutes. He hung long enough for history to capture his stay there. When they were driving him to Golgotha, it was painfully slow. Are you seeing why you read the Bible and sometimes it annoys you? Just summarize it from Pontius Pilate. He died. No! It's not witness enough. It's not evidence enough. So he begins to give the details. They slapped him and he was quiet. And he said, I can call 10,000 angels. Yet I keep quiet. And then, when he hung upon the cross, he said, Eloi, Eloi, Lamak, Sabbath, Tanai. Take note that the father turned his back. The, the, the new birth theology, they did not come from the evidence. The entire exegesis of the new creation was derived from the witness. Paul studied all the evidences, and that's where he built the case for the new believer. I have been crucified with Christ, he said. That happened only because there was an evidence of the cross. Today, the sign of the Christian faith is that cross. Nobody can deny that he hung on a cross. When he died, watch this. When he resurrected, he was not in a rush to come out. He insisted until there was one person to see him. And when Mary saw him, she said, Rabboni, he said, don't touch me. I'm just happy you have seen it. Now run, quickly, before you forget. Run and go and tell the people that you've seen me. I'm alive. Hmm. God is not done with all the arsenals of his evidence. There is the last one coming. One glorious morning. Believers and non-believers alike. Whether you believe in him or not. There will be a shout of a trumpet. That one does not need speaker. We don't need to buy line arrays. From heaven. When you hear that, your banking, your schooling, your preaching. Oh, may it happen during Koinonia. I drop the mic for you and I say, Save Johnny. We've been saying repent if you are not interested. That will be the ultimate evidence. No event in human history would have ever happened like that. 
a massive disappearance of people suddenly the king of kings will say no confusion you didn't believe in me now you watch me in a moment a twinkling of an eye it's only you who will see it all all those who are not born again will not even know anything has happened they will just know that the earth has divided almost into two where are the other people this will become a bestseller after the rapture because this will be the only valid compass that helps people back no other book will matter what else is there and people will have to come and check we'll leave all these bibles for them they will read it but that is the ultimate witness but for now there are brothers there are sisters there are husbands there are wives there are nations that there are territories that have vehemently refused that Jesus is Lord. Some call him a prophet. Some call him a wise man. Some call him an intelligent character that passed through history. Some call him a founder of one of the 4,000 religions we have. He says, who do men say that I am? And Peter said, no, to describe you, I need the Holy Spirit to help me. I can't do this on my own. Thou art Christ. There is a world that is waiting for the demonstration, the validation of every claim of Jesus. He's broken that project into several assignments. What you call purpose, what you call your assignment, is a portion of your contribution to that universal project the name thy kingdom come there is a world listen to me very carefully that is still in doubt don't you say because there are churches full of people everybody knows god on earth out of over 7.8 or so billion people only about 2.5 2.6 billion people are professing Christians, including backsliders, including those who may not suit their Christian activities. That's not a good statistic. And the father is saying, where are they? In Nigeria, there are all kinds of things plaguing and troubling the name of the Lord in this country. And God is saying, I have men, I have children, but I need witnesses. And there are many people who have said, Lord, I'm available. And he said, being available is not enough. If you are going to stand before Pharaoh to advocate an exodus, you need more than an instruction. You need an evidence. Pharaoh is a wizard. He does not let people go just like that. And when the heat starts coming, he can say, okay, you women go, but leave your men and leave your children. Or he will say, leave your children. And like the nation of Israel was saying, everybody is going. But you will need an evidence. The entire journey, watch this, the entire journey of Moses visiting and revisiting Egypt was to one end, to convince Pharaoh that he met the God of the Bible, the owner of the people he was oppressing, and he said, Thus saith the Lord God of the Hebrews, let my people go. And Pharaoh said, okay, I've heard you. So if you met him, what did he give you as a token of truthfulness? And he said, well, for starters, he gave me a rod. And when he threw it down, while it became a serpent, Pharaoh looked at him and said, shame on you and the God who sent you. If this is what he gave you to come and make me release 2.5 people, go back and tell him that 2.5 million people would not live on so small a witness. Could it be that some of us are already witnesses? But the nature of the evidence that we are presenting, the court will not allow our families go. The, the level of power that you have, the level of grace that you operate in is too small for the kind of result that your assignment requires. Therefore, Paul gives us a formula that grace and peace can be multiplied. So that you stand to a point where you have sufficient evidence 
Acts chapter 10 and verse 38. It says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth, brothers and sisters, with the Holy Ghost. Look at the extent. The assignment of Jesus required overwhelming witness. As soon as he showed up, he didn't have time to go to a radio station to say, I'm here. Evidence is all around. Your mother-in-law is sick. Madam, stand up. The kingdom has come to you. He garnered people. And he said, I want to teach you on this kingdom that I have brought. And they listened, they listened till they were hungry. And some of them started going, wicked man, you wasted our time. Three days talking nonsense. He said, call them back. I want to feed them. And the disciples said, don't, don't aggravate these people. They will kill us here. And a young lad came with five loaves and two fish. He blessed it. And he says, you the servers, alongside the audience, learn the power of this kingdom that we boast of. Go and serve. And as they went, the bread began to multiply. Ah, it's not what you have. It's what is on what you have. What is on what you have. If five loaves and two fish can feed 5,000, then it is not the loaf and the fish is what came on it. That's what you must pray for to come on what is in your account. That's what you must pray for to come on what is on your mind. Sometimes it's not more things. It's more grace on what you have. Is God helping us tonight? My dear sister, God has been on a journey with you for decades. And you are wondering, Lord, what is the name of what you are doing with me? I'm giving you the name tonight. He's building the case for the evidence that will make you a faithful witness. Apostle, uh, the only thing I know is that I had a dream years ago. And in that dream... God said, I'm going to become a great prophet to the nations. And that's all. He would just make me to pray for three days. Just when I want to eat, he would say, pray for and fast for three more days. What is he doing with me? My whole family members called me the black sheep. Remember, a case is being built. The day he sent you, the rod that was used there will now become the rod of power. The day that he sends you, that car will now become an instrument of power. I know what I'm saying. Run away from witnesses with no scars. They don't have an evidence. Paul said, let no man trouble me. You want to use in, be used by God in this end time? It's not without scars. A testament of your waiting. A testament of your staying. Apostle, I believe that God has called me. But for five years, we've not crossed 20 people in that church. I love God. I'm doing all I know to do. Be careful what you call small. And be careful what you call delay. The 20 people you are leading are not your members. They are your leaders you have been training for that long. Members have not started coming. Members come when leaders are trained. So the 20 people you have been laughing at and saying, let members come. Let rich people come to my church. Shame on your anointing. If you have to wait for blessed people to come. When you make blessed people by that grace, it proves you are called. Go around disturbing blessed people as though they are the ones who call you. Listen, the training process of a witness is a hard training. Some of you, I'm describing it to you because you are currently in the cave of Adulam right now. You are saying, Lord, what is wrong with my life? I'm a beautiful woman, but nobody is coming to marry me. I'm a wonderful woman. I, I, I've done all I know to do, and yet I'm not able to have a child. I, I graduated, and 10 years, 12 years, nobody has come to give me a job. Be patient. There is an evidence that is being built. 
don't corrupt the power of the testimony that is waiting for you through impatience hear me behind every glory there is a story the story is what makes the glory desirable if the bible just said jesus came he walked he died he resurrected even me i will not give my life to him i won't give my life to that kind of story but then when i see his passion he went through this for me there must be something special about me that's how those you are called to serve will thank you when they hear what you had to go through to be a savior they say you had to go through this to be a prophet is this the price of being an apostle is this the price of being the kingdom millionaire now they will not just clap for you because you are a billionaire they will clap for you because you are a testament of endurance you went through this so that my children will eat you went through this so that nations will be built I once prayed for a politician who was so frustrated and he told me, he said, Apostle, every time I want to stop, I have spent money, I campaign, I do my best, but then things don't seem to work out. Sometimes, even when I know that, you know, everything turned in my favor, I'm tired of all this. I've been offered all kinds of options, but I've made up my mind to stand for Christ. And I told him, I said, do you think... God is wasting your time. Hmm. Joseph, what would your story be if you were not in the prison? Would we really believe that God delivers? The prison is where both good and bad people meet. <laughs> be careful who you point in the prison. Because the prison is the meeting place for both good and bad people. Joseph is in the prison. The wine pressers are in the prison. Jesus is on the cross. The thieves are on the cross. There is a place where both good and bad meet. That's why when you don't understand what is happening with the lives of people, keep quiet and pray. Because they may be in the prison there to help those who are in the prison. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Why are bad things happening to this person? His brother just died. His sister just died. He's broke. He's a failure. Shame on him. You are an embarrassment to redemption. Children in the faith can talk that. But those who have truly passed through the school of the spirit understand. They can just pray and say, look, relative to your service, the results you are getting is not matching. God is doing something. Just be patient. There are times that you see the actor in a movie beating you even think he's dead. Just when you are about to sympathize with him, you see his hands moving. And it gives you a ray of hope. But in the end of it, you will see victory. Believers, some of you may not like what I am teaching you. But the making of a witness is not on the dining table with tea and bread. The furnace of affliction is how witnesses are made. I repeat, the furnace of affliction. There are prayers you can never pray away. You only pray for grace to pass through. It is a baptism you must drink of. And it is a cup that you must drink of and be baptized with that baptism. Apostle, I want power. There is only a limit impartation can do. You must dig your own well. There are times when people are sleeping, you are awake. And God is saying, the anointing I'm giving you is not for a local assembly. I'm sending you to the nations. You study your Bible, you finish it, God says, start again. And you say, God, you are not fair. I've finished my Bible five times, I've not preached one sermon. That preaching that is teaching you, you will preach and be tired. And thank God for the residue of what you have now. He says, eat for the journey is far. There was a time in my life, I would not spend up to two weeks. Except during election, I didn't spend up to two weeks at home. Because of demand, traveling, traveling. Don't rush seasons in your life. You will miss the season you are trying to rush out of right now. Don't rush. Man of God, stop carrying complimentary cards around. Invite me. God called me. The fact that you have to beg people to believe you is a sign that your evidence is little or zero. The key to publicizing yourself is to remain in the secret place. You are studying scripture. You are learning. The day they give you a mic to preach in one conference, 
you will so represent the purposes of God in a way that you will never go back. While Joseph was in that prison, I remember him just saying, God, fan these flames. You have called me to be a great man. I had a dream, and in that dream I saw the sun, the moon, and the eleven stars. But how would it happen? And then God said, Son, we have worked on this gift. It's time to use it. Two people have dreams. And he interprets the dream. And even when one tried to forget him, God now gave the king a dream and shot the heavens over the wise men, the sorcerers. And the, the wine presser said, I remember my wrong. There is a young man. Can I tell you this? Everything today that God is using as a weapon and teaching you how to fight with, I promise you he will use it tomorrow. Your intelligence, your beauty, your grace, your voice, your fasting, none of it is a waste. You, listen, I, I, don't, I don't watch so much of, of television, but sometimes I watch a channel called Food Network. Are we together? And then there's this competition that they do sometimes. You almost can guess what they will ask you to cook with the kind of ingredients that you see there. So I want you to look at your life and look at the kind of weapons God is giving you. It should suggest where you are going to. The weapon of patience. The weapon of endurance. Come on now. You are smart enough to suspect. And it's safe to suspect. Lord, why are you giving me the weapon of patience? Why are you giving me endurance? Why are you training me to war? Why are you training me to pray? Why will I pray seven days dry? And God says, you just do what I'm telling you. David, I'm training you with a lion and a bear. But that's not what will give you honor. They are only schoolmasters. The person you are going to fight is not a lion. The person you are going to fight is not a bear. I can't use Goliath to train you. So I will use what looks like Goliath. So you kill the lion, nobody says thank you. I'm teaching you self-control. You kill the bear. Nobody says thank you. You are there in the wilderness. Then one day, can I tell you this? When your season of appearing comes, eh? It does not look like it. You will get home in the morning and walk out like a normal day, not knowing that that is the day heaven has time to honor and announce you. The young boy went to go and give his brothers food. And when he went, he saw... A, a beast with six fingers and six toes roaring at veterans of war and yet none of them had the courage to fight and immediately he saw them he remembered I have an evidence over. I have an evidence he went to meet the brothers and they said if you don't turn back I will slap you now you think we, think we are feeding sheep here he said it's God disguised me using sheep but it's not sheep that I've been tending to. The same way God used you, He used a job to bring you to Abuja. It's not the job. The job gave you a platform to come here and hear this truth. He can bless you anywhere. Listen, God is a master of using situations to move you to prophecy. He can use a discussion at the back of your car to connect you to a destiny helper. Listen, always see the mystery behind the activities you are involved with. God can use a sick patient in the hospital and force you to get to that hospital because someone in that hospital is connected to your next level. It's not about the hospital. If Joseph was not in the prison, how would he meet the wine presser? That's why the Bible says in everything, give thanks. Complaining is an indictment on God's integrity. You are, you are only seeing part of the acting. Give thanks. Because there is something he's doing. God is raising mighty men in this place. God is raising People of power in this place. God is raising 
signs and wonders in this place. And you won't stop, you won't stop till you look just like him. He won't stop, no, he won't stop till your life looks like him. He won't stop, he won't stop till you look just like him. You may cry, but he won't stop till you look just like him. You may be weak, but he won't stop till you look just like him. Please don't stop. Please don't stop till my life looks like you. Please don't stop. Please don't stop till my life looks like you. God is teaching us how to interpret the writings on the wall. It was persecution that came as a disguise and spread the apostles to different regions. When you truly become secured in the love of God, you interpret everything in your life with respect to His love and with respect to your assignment. There must be something you are doing, oh God. No. For my brother to just die, for my son to just die, there is something you are doing. I may not understand, but praise the Lord. Thine is the glory, thine is the kingdom, thine is the power. Hear me, believers. We must raise people who have a spiritual understanding and how to interpret things. Lord, why am I in this nation? Why was I not born in the US or in the UK? Now you know the answer. There is an evidence. He wants to use you as a specimen of his power that nations can be transformed through men who love Jesus. Let me bring you a word of encouragement. I sense in my spirit that many believers are currently in the cave of Adula. There are families who are wondering, Lord, why will I be fasting and praying husband and wife? And yet we don't seem to afford a meal. We are not lazy. We've gone to men of God for prayer. We've sown seeds. Every time you've done right and things don't seem to happen, something is going on behind the scenes. I assure you, every time you know you are walking in obedience and truth, and yet things don't change, God is preparing something. Sometimes it may be a table He's preparing before you. Witness. I wonder what happened to Potiphar when they anointed Pharaoh. When they anointed Joseph to become prime minister. I'm sure Joseph would look at Potiphar and say, Hello Potiphar, how are you? And Potiphar says, Oh dear. And he says, No, 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 don't worry. Please hear me, brothers and sisters. God brought us tonight to teach us the ways of the kingdom. That more than believers, more than pastors, more than business people, more than mothers, more than fathers, He's called us to be witnesses. Do you know Mary's whole assignment was to give birth? Her assignment was not to be a preacher. Her assignment was not... Your assignment on earth can be done in one day. Do you know that? Yes, sir. Hmm. Your assignment can be to give birth to that prophet who will spearhead the revival. No one that demons saw it and they are attacking you. Attacking you. Attacking you. And when that is happening, God says, don't worry, I'm writing something. Could it be, oh dear politician, that God reserved you for such a time as this? Because he reserves his best for the last there are men of God here who are saying, God, it, it seems like you are not utilizing the grace you have put upon my life. When a football club is playing a serious tournament, are we together now? And when they find out that the team they are about to face, maybe semi-finals or finals, is a serious team, they would do well to keep their best players behind. Because it can be a strategy with the opposing team to injure and incapacitates the key players. And so for the purpose of that final match, 
God will retreat certain people. And you will see such a professional player eat in but on the reserve. That's what is happening to some of you. God, it looks like you are disgracing me. You are falling my hand. And God says, no, no wonder you are not God. You are my child. Because you don't understand. You are not thinking my thoughts. I'm waiting until someone makes a statement that over his dead body for anybody to rise in this family. God says, now you are ready to come out. I want to unleash my finest. I want to unleash my brightest. And the day you step your feet in that place, and you say, I hear there is someone who mocks the name of the Lord here. And the man says, be careful. Do you know how your father died? said of course i know how my father died on the cross i don't know which one you are talking about then the man knows that you are not just speaking by the flesh again ladies and gentlemen it is by this mystery that god by his mercy has brought us thus far we did not come here by luck we came here by death the price for life death the price for life two things will happen here very quickly we are going to pray and there is going to be a very serious impartation here the Lord gave me an instruction listen I sense in my heart that there are some of you who are coming to the end of seasons of training. Listen, listen. It may not be everybody. Be sensitive. I sense that there are people in fivefold. There are people who your faithfulness is like there has been a marking of your script in the realm of the spirit. And even you, some of you from early this year, you started sensing. When a woman is about to give birth, I'm not a woman, I may never be one, I will never be one in Jesus' name. But then, listen carefully. From the experience of those who have given birth, the last trimester of a woman, and the moments, even days before she gives birth, they are delicate moments. Is that true? Correct me if I'm wrong, but I know that most women prepare their things, baby things already. They are not ready for stories. They move around with it because any moment, sometimes it can happen by two o'clock. She wakes her husband, he says, Don't come, I'm, I'm, you better wake up. Wake up because a miracle is about to happen. Let me tell you this. I'm sensing in my spirit, some of you, the way you have been fasting, the way you have been praying, the kinds of disciplines that God has been subjecting you through. Please hear me. Oh Esther, could it be that it is time to see Ahasuerus? Oh Ruth, could it be that it is time to see Boaz? Joseph, could it be that you are a day left to meet your king? David, could it be that the time has come to see Goliath? Anyone who falls in the day of battle is proof you were not trained well. Could it be that God has seemed to be delaying you because your destiny helper is about to show up? The day he entered into the country, you started sensing in your spirit that there is a shift. You even had dreams. For some of you, God uses similitudes. He would not tell you exactly, but you saw a celebration in your dream. And you woke up and said, for what? In one room? I have used similitudes. I have multiplied visions. I have come tonight as a midwife because it's time to push. I have come tonight prophetically as a midwife. Some of you, you have been carrying these children for decades. You have been carrying the anointing, the, the office of a miracle worker. Now Renard Bonke has gone to be with the Lord. Now many of these people have gone to be with the Lord. For many of them, there are vacuums. Catherine Kuhlman. MV Sample McPherson. There are businessmen who you do not even know of. 
who control the economy of nations. Mantles are falling here tonight. Anointings are falling here tonight. Miracles are happening here tonight. For the kings to arise, for revival to return. For the kings to be born, for revival to return. Yeah, I am your, I am Many years ago, somewhere in Zaria, I used to go and pray every night. And I didn't know what God was doing. Just go pray like a fool, come back, pray like a fool. Was barely learning things about the anointing. I didn't know that it was an apostolic call to the nations. I just kept obeying blindly. I will never forget one night. That was the first time I was going to minister to someone. It was a lady, late in the night. I lifted my hands for the first time to lay my hands on her. And there she went under the anointing. I had seen this with Benny Hinn. I had seen this with Papa Hagen. Now this is happening through my life. My God, is it a new season? Then the next time I remember going for a meeting. And I stood out, barely lifted my hands. I began to see manifestations of God's power. I said, what is this? I have always known about the call of God. But what call? And how far? For four years now, God has been telling you, empty your account. And you've been emptying your account like a fool. Lord, what are you doing with me? I'm telling you, I've come to midwife that prophecy. Now you will understand that he's teaching you because of the kind of wealth you will be holding the wealth that is equivalent to the economy of nations and so he does not want your heart to be inclined to it please don't think I'm just entertaining you we are going to pray and you will receive something from heaven do you know why Jesus Christ did not do impartation from day one you read his mentorship strategy the guys were even angry. Won't you lay hands on us? We want to shine. And he said, keep quiet. You will shine till you don't, till you die. But hold on. And then when he had taught them, to the point that when he resurrected, he didn't even have time to celebrate his victory. He said, hey, let's go back to the class. When he was done, he said, now you tarry. In ten days time, there is one who is called the paraclete. The one who is the ultimate evidence. You were not there on the cross. But there is one who has been sent who was there. It is in partnership with him that you can tell the world he reigns. Today we are able to tell the nations he's alive. Not because we were there when he died. We are able to tell nations that he can lift you. We are able to tell territories that when he speaks, he says what he means. And he means what he says. Because the cave of Adulam, by the privilege of God's grace, has cultured us and is still building us into what today the world is celebrating. You may cry, but don't hurry seasons. Hear me. There are many people who do not know what God is making out of your life. The Bible says, now are we the sons of God and it doth not yet appear. There are some of you, your assignment is not in this nation. You were only trained in this nation. When God is done with you, he will shoot you like an arrow. The West still needs the power of God. They brought technology, we are grateful. They brought all kinds of things, we are grateful. But right now, with the kind of spiritual decadence, I tell you, there are saviors that are rising from the cave of Adulam. And God will start shooting them to Asia, Europe, Canada, US. Because there is a harvest that must be prepared. 
The move of God that is coming is not just a move of crusades alone. We are going to be discussing next week the other part of this. When we discuss the geography of your weakness. There are people who, when God is done with you, there is no power that can stop you from winning that election. The reason is because God is the one putting you there to do what he has trained you to do. Two prayer points. Are you ready? Prayer point number one. I'm available. Lord, make me usable. Lift your voice and cry. Please pray. Don't be distracted. I'm yours. I'm yours. Pray. I'm yours forever. I'm yours, I'm yours, I'm yours. My life is yours, it's yours, it's yours forever. It's yours, it's yours, it's yours. Lord, I'm yours, I'm yours, I'm yours forever. I'm yours, I'm yours. I'm yours, my life is yours, it's yours, it's yours forever. Don't be ashamed of your tears. Whatever you ask of me, I'll give it to you. Whatever you ask of me, I surrender. For this purpose you were born. For this purpose you were raised. Whatever you ask of me, I surrender. Lord, I'm available. Whatever you ask of me. Whatever you ask of me, I surrender. Let it be from the depth of your heart. Whatever you ask of me, whatever you ask of me, Hallelujah. Listen. Listen. I truly believe with all my heart that the caliber of men and women that God is raising for the end times, I truly believe the world has not seen them yet. Many of them are silent in the cave of Adulam. Nobody knows them. Some of them are not even on TV. No ushers, no protocol. But there is fire. The refiner's fire is working. Some of them are even in villages. They are not just in cities wearing suits. At the back of that hut, at the back of that tree, praying and saying, Lord, I'm available. Hear me? I know that there are many blessed people here, thanks to God. There are many blessed people listening and following. But can I tell you this? The kind of wealth that will lift the name of Jesus in this end time, I assure you we've not seen it yet. No. No. Wealth that will save nations in one day. Not just estates. Not just oil and gas. Thank God for these things. Some of you, God is calling you into the ministry of kingdom, wealth, and financing. But you are receiving the training of a prophet. And you are saying, Lord, it's too hard. The reason is because all of us are the same thing, witnesses. So whether you are a pastor or a businessman, God will train you together. He's telling the pastor, fast seven days, you fast seven days. Politician, fast seven days. And you are wondering, Lord, is it not too harsh? I'm showing you the mystery now. There are men and women here that God will be committing the resources of nations. I'm telling you this. Individuals. I have seen this many times in my visions. There are some of you God has called you. And is the ministry of influence. Gatekeepers of systems and structures. And as it is now you are still like Hadassah. Do not mind how you will get to the palace. Leave that to the intelligence of the scriptwriter. Yours is to stay. 
Some of you are like Mordecai. Your honor is there. You've helped many people, but you've been forgotten. Still remain at the gate. A day will come the king will not be able to sleep. Allow the script writer to do his work. Whatever you ask of me, whatever you ask of me, I surrender. Let me teach you something that you must learn. Every time Isaac is delayed, be careful. If you are not careful, you will give birth to what will eventually fight Isaac. Every time the season has come close, be careful. The devil can position Hagar and Hagar will give birth to something that is not the promise. The ability to stay to the end is where the stamina of the believer comes from. Some of you are one week left in your training. Some of you are one month left. Haven't done 12 years. What is one month that you cannot finish? Your assignment is to obtain grace to push. A woman will not say, I've been pushing for the last six hours. I will not push again. For as long as she has strength. And there's something called induction. Where doctors can induce the woman and labor can start. Please listen to me. The Lord sent me to this city. And the Lord sent us and brought this convergence. Not for showmanship. It is because seasons. I tell you this. Write it down. Seasons are changing in this nation. I've not made any prophetic statement over the nation or prophetic teaching since I came to this city. But God will grant grace and the times will come. But for now, hear what I'm telling you. The tide is changing. Spiritually speaking in the body of Christ, the tide is changing. As far as the birthing of prophecy is concerned, the tide is changing. Can I tell you this? Those who refuse to position themselves, you will be surprised that God gave you an assignment, but you see someone leaving your assignment because God will not allow your carelessness. You know, this thing about destiny is a relay. Someone's life is tied to your own fulfilling your purpose. And if you are delaying God and delaying other people, his bit of brick can be given to another. Just because God called you does not mean he must use you. No. There are conditions. You can use your will to say, Lord, I'm not interested. He will honor you. And you will watch somebody living your dreams. Second prayer point. Father, the staying power to finish this season of training, I receive grace. Lift your voice and pray. Please pray. Please pray. Oh, 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 may cry, but I obtain grace of God. Grace to stay in ministry. Grace to stay as far as my assignment is concerned. Oh. I can hear with the ears of the Spirit and I see a mighty army rising. Yes, I know they're coming from afar, rising from afar, rising from afar, 
from God. You are not from your state of origin. You will only pass through your state of origin. There was a man sent from God. Passed through the womb of your mother and your father. Now it's time for you to rise and understand your prophetic identity. You have understood your biological identity. You have understood your geographic and your demographic identity you have understood your sociological identity it's time for you to understand your divine identity now listen to me please look up everybody there is a pattern of the spiritual trainings that make up a witness a witness is not only a witness because God said it a witness is a witness like a student you pass a medical student through a school and there are times dissecting cadavers you feel irritated the smell of formalin and all the inconveniences of learning anatomy physiology you're going through all that pain and you want to give up but then you remember that lives are tied to what I'm learning. At the end of it, when you become a consultant and God helps you to build a hospital and you see the thousands of lives that send you text messages and say, thank you, doctor. Thank you, for pr professor. Thank you for not giving up. When other people were crying, thank you for continuing. Can I tell you this? Tomorrow, Nations will say thank you for coming to, for Koinonia. They will tell you. They will say thank you. You had an option. You were tired from office, from church. But you came. Thank you for hearing what you heard. Thank you for believing what you heard. And thank you for using what you heard. It says thou art my battle axe. My weapon of war. I submit to you ladies and gentlemen. People of God. Family of God that God is still searching for men. Not many can pass through the school of the Spirit to be shaped and to be built. This is the making of a witness. This is how the great are made. This is how champions are made in the kingdom. It is the reason why when they rise and you talk against them, whether in secret or in public, God judges you because there is blood dripping on their altar constantly. The blood that is a testament of their pain and their endurance. Let this week for you be a week of serious spiritual emphasis as you contemplate on your prophetic destiny of being a witness. Now you are about to receive something. This would be an impartation you would live to remember. Please open your heart in one minute and say, Lord, the grace that it takes for the new season in my life, I open up my spirit. Go ahead and pray. Please pray. Oh, come, oh, come, me, man, you well. And run some captivity, Israel. Oh, come, oh, come, Emmanuel. And run some captivity, Israel. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel. 
has come to you. Peace is Israel. He has come to you. Peace is Israel. He is lifting you. Peace is Israel. He is restoring you. Peace is Israel. He is anointing you. Peace is Israel. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel has come to you. Peace is Israel. Anointing you. Peace is Israel. Advancing you. Peace is Israel. In the name of Jesus, the Son of the Living God, I declare, Father, there are men and women here who have been in the cave of Adullam, going through the trainings of the Spirit, fasting, building, going through shame, going through reproach, for the sake of the witness. Like John in the Isle of Patmos, on account of the testimony of their witness, they have endured many things. They have received many stripes. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus to you, O God of my covenant, let fire from heaven that is able to anoint and equip men and women, let it fall right now at the count of three. One, two, three. Take that fire. Take that fire. Take that fire. Take that fire. Oh, Deborah, I speak to you. Arise by the Spirit. Women in the order of Anna, Sarah, Deborah, in the name of Jesus. Men and women of the gospel, I speak to you. I place upon you the grace for the prophetic, the grace for the apostolic, the grace for the evangelistic, the dreams that you had. I give life to them by the power of the Holy Ghost. Receive, receive. Hear me. There are some of you like Esther. The palace is your destiny. It's time for that grace to come upon you. I stand like Haggai, the keeper of the king's virgins. There is an oil I'm about to give you. You will need that oil for Ahasuerus to receive you. Therefore, I stretch my hands. May the Esther anointing come upon everyone here. Call into government. Call into influence. Take that grace. Take that grace. Take that grace. Politicians, take that grace. Members of parliament, take that grace. Captains of industry, take that grace. There are men and women who need to step into dimensions of wealth transfer because of the assignment. It's not just about the products and the services that you offer alone. That is principal, but there is a grace that is connected to prophecy and destiny. I want to pray for you. Lord, mantles that make for wealth and prosperity, not just for self-aggrandizement. I stand by the privilege of God, the God of heaven who is the helper of us all. Ebenezer, the one who can help men. I speak to you, carry that mantle now. Carry that grace now upon your business. Carry that grace now in the name of Jesus. Please pay attention. We are receiving an impartation. There are women here who are like Mary. What is in your womb is more than a child. You are betting saviors. I stretch my hands in the name of Jesus. I decree and declare 
by the power of the Holy Spirit the grace to step into prophecy may that grace rest upon you now oh, oh, oh. your lifting has come oh, oh, oh. your lifting has come there are music ministers here God has been training you but this nation has not had your tongues. Africa is yet to hear your songs. I place grace upon your worship. I give it wings by prophecy. I stand by the rod of the apostolic and the prophetic. I push you. Speak to the nations. Sing to the nations. In the name of Jesus Christ. There are people here that have the destiny of saviors. Your families are at the mercy of your rising. But it looks like there are powers sitting on your destiny that have vowed that you will never rise. I stand by the God of my covenant, the one who called me. Any power sitting upon your prophecy, any power sitting upon the next level of your life, I come by two rods of the apostolic and the prophetic. I scatter it right now. I scatter it right now. I scatter it right now. Find visibility in the name of Jesus Christ. Hear me There are some of you God has given you a king maker anointing You don't become kings yourself But you can enthrone kings And you can remove them It's a dimension of the prophetic But you have not walked in it yet in the name that is above all names, I stretch my hands and I declare the grace to enthrone kings. Receive that grace now. In the name of Jesus. 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 Everything that your hands have started, but mysteriously you have not been able to finish. Because there are powers that stand. He says, once again I desire to come to you. But Satan hindered us. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name that is above all names. I declare, the finisher's anointing may it rest upon you. The finisher's anointing. The finisher's anointing. Take that grace now. We are rounding up. Don't be tired. Hear me. He said Isaac dug a well. And the Philistines covered it. He dug another well. They covered it. He dug the third one and they left him. He called it Rehoboth. He said God has given me my own space. Can I tell you this? I want to pray for you. You must be tired of escorting people in destiny and not finding a place. Lord, where is my place in this city? Financially, spiritually. There is God is a God of portions. I speak to you. Let me first speak to this city. Abuja, hear the word of the Lord. I speak by the rod of the apostolic and the prophetic. The portion of God's people in the name of Jesus. Deliver to them now. Deliver to them now. And every nation you are watching from, every territory and region you are following from, your portion in that land. The Bible says, as for the earth, out of it comes bread. He said, the increase of the field is for all. That even the king eats from the increase. May your portion come to you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Two more prayers and we are done. We want to cross the powers that fight visibility. Please understand what I am telling you. It says, and I, if I be lifted up, Christ cannot be glorified when we are in hiding. 
God must give us elevated platforms of influence. Some of you in the area of royalty, some in the area of government, in business. By God's grace, we have sufficient spiritual intelligence to know that spirituality blindly without influence will not be able to do much for the kingdom from a territorial standpoint. Are we together? There is a grace that makes for visibility. Some of you have served God acceptably. You have your small prayer groups. You have your different platforms. And you have been serving faithfully. But you are now asking, Lord, how will I be lifted? It takes prophecy to lift you. And here comes the prophetic word. I decree and declare to you, in the name that is above all names, by the power that raised Christ from the dead, the platform that you need for the next season of your life to glorify Jesus, the platform you need for the next season of your life to bring nations to the cross, the platform you need, the elevated platform that translates to nation building, that translates to kingdom advance, that translates to the betterment of life. I speak to you by prophecy. Rise to that level. Rise to that level. Rise to that level. Rise to that level. And I will not be silent. I Let it be your commitment. As long as, as, long as I, I am breathing, I will always worship you. One more time with understanding. And I will. As long as Please listen carefully. Let's just listen to this prophetic instruction. Now I want to challenge you. Please just discipline yourself and obtain grace and submit to this training and what what happens in your life. I want to challenge you all together as a family of faith, global. Let's obtain grace from God. That from tomorrow up until Saturday, trust God for grace. From 12 midnight to 12.30, let it find you praying. 12 midnight. Koinonia global everywhere. Please put it on social media. Invite anyone across. This is not just a koinonia thing. We are sent to the body of Christ. Twelve on the dots. Do yourself a favor. Don't worry. If you are on a medical, if it's a medical thing, that's all right. And maybe little children that go to school, that's all right. You can pray for them. But every priest, twelve on the dots. I won't come online. Don't expect to see me. I'll be praying and, and taking God seriously. You don't have to wait till you are primed. Find any worship, find any koinonia video you can find on the internet. The media can help you. Listen to something and pray. Your married, trust God for grace. Tap your wife and say, can we try it? You just do what I'm asking you to do in obedience and understanding. It does not kill. 12 to 12.30. Blasting tongues you are praying Making decrees over your destiny In the name of Jesus I am forcefully advancing We are doing this as a family Please media remind people every day From tomorrow Let's say if you, Some of you, you have grace You can start from tonight But officially tomorrow Down till Saturday 12 on the dot Let a prophetic bell Alarm clock Wherever you are, Zikos Kaparus Kiatamarakata, 
You are praying. Worship is playing. You are connecting in the spirit. Let's do this together as a family of faith. And then come on Sunday inviting everyone. And God brings the balance of this series. And let fire fall from heaven. And let's see the devil that stops you from moving in this season. Are we in agreement on this? Please listen. Following online, I know that we have the difference of time zones. It is, it is 12 midnight, 00 GMT plus 1. Let's work with our time. It doesn't have to be night your time. Whatever time permit our bias, it is Nigerian time. 12 midnight. Fire from heaven. Monday. Tuesday, fire. Wednesday, fire. You just keep praying. The flesh may be weak. Say flesh, you are joking. <clears throat> A few minutes to 12, you can water down with some scriptures. Prepare your arsenals and hold on to the four horns of the altar. See what happens to your prayer life. See the testimonies that you will bring here. I'm challenging the body of Christ. Participate in this. This is not just some ministry activity. We are doing this with intelligence. Are we together? Let me make the altar call. Thank you for your patience. Keep standing everyone. Please let's avoid movement. So that we honor those who must come to Jesus. There's no cajoling you. You've heard the word. You know that Jesus is the answer. Here in the main auditorium. And all the overflows down to the basement. And then the overflow outside. Those following online. You've heard me talk about Jesus. And the need to be witnesses. You cannot be a witness until you are grafted into the faith life. Wherever you are, please minimize movement. Let's honor them. Whether up the balcony, down here, outside. I'm going to count one to five for sake of time. Please leave your seat. And I want you to run. Come and stand here. Perhaps you are saying, Apostle, I remember giving my life to Jesus. But I want to truly rededicate my life. Join them quickly. One. Please run and come. God bless you. Thank you for your courage. They are not the only ones. I know the Holy Spirit is speaking to many. Please stand, gentlemen. Stand. God bless you. Are you coming? Koinonia, is this the best you can do? As you encourage them, ye must be born again. The global harvest is a mandate that we must not fail over. Keep coming. Jesus is the answer for the world today. Above him there's no other. Jesus is the way. Jesus is the answer for the world today. Above him there's no other. All overflows, you can walk to your screens. And then those following at home, you can stretch your hands, be ready for the prayer. All those who need to come, if it's for salvation prayer, please come very quickly. I salute every one of you following online and here. Lift your right hand as we pray. Jesus is here. You're not just reciting a poem. This is a declaration that I assume is coming from a desperate heart that is true. Say, Lord Jesus. One more time, say, Lord Jesus. I love you with all my heart. And I believe that you are the Son of God. Tonight, I have heard your word. I decree and I declare that Jesus is Lord, is Savior, is King over my life. I receive the forgiveness of sin. I receive eternal life into my spirit. I also receive the abundance of grace, even the gift of righteousness. And I declare that from tonight and forever, I am a child of God, saved, washed in the blood of the Lamb. In Jesus' name. Keep your hands lifted. Father, thank you for these precious ones. You call them by your spirit tonight. Some of them are crying. 
The Bible declares that whosoever will come to you, you will in no wise cast away. I decree and declare in the name of Jesus that the power of sin, of Satan, of hell, and of the grave is broken from your life forever. And I declare that from tonight you find peace with God, you find the peace of God. You walk away free and free to serve the purposes of God with your life. From today you go forward ever and backward never in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Congratulations to you, my brothers and sisters. Please just follow. There's a gentleman waving the counselor placard. Please follow him. Koinonia, celebrate them as they go. Hallelujah. Amen. We're about wrapping up, but please let me do a quick recap. Remember, from tomorrow, 12 midnight, invite your family and friends. Invite everyone world over. Please participate in this seven days. We're praying praying in the spirit, releasing prophetic words, and thanking God. Look to our social media platforms. Probably we can send in prayer points. I think we should do that. We can just add daily prayer points to just guide your prayers so you can look to our social media platforms to find um, the prayer points that guide you. But whether or not you see prayer points there, this is not acting. This is a serious affair. You can pray in tongues all through the 30 minutes and you did not waste your time. Have you been blessed tonight? Yeah. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Please, while standing, help me honor and celebrate Pastor Uche, House on the Rock, Abuja. Thank you. Thank you. Such an honor to have you around, sir. Amen. How many of you were blessed? Let's honor the ministry of the one and only Chris Morgan, your lovely wife and team. God bless you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. It's good to be back home and we thank God for a time of worship. We have a lot to do tonight. Just to perform two functions very quickly and then we'll get to the ministry of the word. Hallelujah. Number one is to announce that by the grace of God next week, Sunday will be a miracle service for the month of June. Hallelujah. Please. I'd like you to come with very definite expectations. Um, if you are unable to help them, please, just help those under the anointing. If you are unable to find a place inside, it doesn't mean you are outside His presence. Praise the name of the Lord. Let me tell you this. The only thing that those inside stand to benefit above those outside is just the privilege of direct contact but as far as impact is concerned wherever you are it doesn't matter which of the overflows outside following online so please if you come early enough and you have a space inside that's fine and good but in any case just walk with the ushers the protocol team they'll find a place for you and wherever you are you can trust that God will bless you in Jesus name now the second announcement is very important on Friday Friday by 11 a.m prompt we are going to be having a live broadcast this concerns koinonia global usually i do this friday by the grace of god is my birthday amen praise the name of the lord thank you now my concern quite honestly if i have a way of allowing that day to pass without you knowing i will do that gladly but um, I look forward to that day for one reason, an opportunity to be able to have this broadcast where I get to teach, share a few truths, and then just express my appreciation to our global family. So please, everyone, it's not just a Koinonia broadcast, it's for the entire body of Christ. Everyone connect on Friday, 11 a.m. West African time. Please, from every nation, do well to let people know all over social media Friday let it be a time where you open up your heart prepare to be blessed prepare to receive from that broadcast amen and amen and um, let me give you a kind counsel the only thing that you can really do for me during my birthday is just to pray for me um, this is just me praise the name of the Lord every ceremony really is, is really far from who I am just pray for me let the Lord hear you 
and let him bless your heart and that's enough. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Exodus chapter 20 and verse 12. Please everyone you can sit but I request that all the men stand, young and old. Please stand. Women, please sit. Let's just communicate. Honor today is Father's Day. All the men stand. The Bible says, Honor thy father and thy mother to the end that your days may be long upon the land which the Lord giveth thee. Malachi chapter 1 and verse 6. The A part says, Malachi chapter 6, chapter 1 verse 6. A son honoreth his father and a servant his master. It says, If then I be a father, where is mine honor? Um, it is important that special days that are significant in the lives of people be recognized and where possible appreciated. Men are a testament of many things. Endurance, resilience, consistency. And we were discussing this a bit in, in Port Harcourt this morning. That statistically they say that women live longer than men. Because in today's world, it is very difficult to be a man. Most people may never understand the price it takes to get food on the table, the diligence, and so on and so forth. And largely speaking, most men are not mentored into manhood. They just grow by reason of the passage of time. There's hardly an intentional mentorship system that builds young people to become men. So the average man is largely confused about life and destiny. Would have to depend on the church or any organized structure to inculcate the values of discipline, excellence, integrity, productivity, and so on and so forth. And so every time we have the opportunity to celebrate men and fathers more particularly, I think it's something that we should take, we should not take for granted. By extension, I stand on behalf of Koinonia Global to honor all our fathers in this nation, our fathers in Africa, we are a house of honor and we are sent to the body of Christ, all the fathers who have labored through their scars and their sacrifices have paved the way for us to come. Indeed, we are noble sons, we are sons with understanding, we know the value of sacrifice, they have taken their years and given it to us at a platter of gold and I stand together with all the men in this house. We celebrate our fathers in this nation, fathers of faith, political fathers, economic fathers, all who have paid the price to pave the way. And then for all the men in this house, we celebrate you so lavishly. Women, let's give our men a big, big hand clap. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. In one minute, let me request that every woman seated, if you can stretch your hand to every man you see close to you and just speak a word of prayer. Then the men, let's pray for ourselves. Father Grace, this is a house of honor. We will raise noble men, men who are spiritual, men who are excellent, men who are intentional about living lives that count in the name of Jesus. Are you praying? Decree and declare. Responsible men as husbands, responsible men as family um, men, fathers, responsible men as leaders. In the name of Jesus, we decree it so. We decree it so. The ills and the vices that destroy productivity in society will not find expression in the life of any of our men. We declare that you are noble. You are like the princes in the palace. We declare Job 29, the light of God is upon your mind and upon your path. In the name of Jesus, we are still praying. We prophesy Psalm 112. Blessed is the man that feareth the Lord, that delighted greatly in his command. The Bible declares that his seed shall be mighty upon earth. It says the generation of the upright shall be blessed, wealth and riches shall be in his house, and his righteousness endures forever. Hallelujah. Father, we decree it so, and we agree as a house and as a global family that our men are noble, our men are exceptional, our men are spiritual, our men are productive, 
in the name of Jesus Christ. They are active contributors to kingdom come. They are active contributions contributors to nation building we declare that they are responsible in family life they are responsible as leaders in society in the name of jesus the men here represent models models for a generation we decree it and declare it so and lord on this day we have declared and set aside to be father's day bless every father bless every leader bless every husband bless every shepherd in the name of Jesus, we declare that all the fathers will continue to go from glory to glory, from grace to grace. And this we decree in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit. God bless you. Happy Father's Day. Please be seated. Hallelujah. Amen. Are you set for tonight? Witnesses part two. Let's pray in the Spirit for one minute. Father, our hearts are open to receive. Grant us grace. We have come to learn. We have come to be built. Are you praying? Are you praying? The entrance of your word gives life. The entrance of your word gives life. And understanding unto the simple. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. It always is a joy to welcome and honor everyone here, great and small alike. This is the house of God. This is Koinonia. And um, we've been on a series. The series is aimed at helping us to become effective kingdom ambassadors. And we call the series Witnesses. We considered part one last week just a quick recap and then we begin to build tonight as we prepare to pray hallelujah we did establish last week that believers are classified according to scripture in two ways two categories basically there is the classification that is based on identification and there is the classification that is based on function that the Bible lets us know that we are one with Christ, for instance. It reveals to us the implication of our oneness, our ability to be one with Christ. And then the Bible also lets us know that every privilege in this kingdom comes with responsibilities. So it calls us kings, food bearers, light, salt, priests, the chosen people, a royal priesthood, and then in Acts chapter 1 and verse 8, he calls us witnesses. We establish that a witness is a validator of a claim. Please pay attention, our online family. Pay attention, the word of God is being taught now. A witness is one who has knowledge about a matter. A witness is one who is able to provide a testimonial evidence. Of what he or she claims to know and we said that every witness has a responsibility of providing an evidence and evidence is a token of truthfulness it is used as an instrument of validation a token an evidence is the means of establishing the validity of a fact hallelujah then we began to talk about the making of witnesses we spoke a bit about how witnesses are made. That believers do not just become witnesses in experience by default. There is a season and there is a pathway that every believer should follow, must follow. And we'll take it from there tonight. Matthew chapter 4 and verse 19. We have a long journey and we obtain grace from God to do justice to this series. If you're in agreement, you may say Amen. Matthew 4 and verse 19 And he said to them The he being Jesus Follow me and I will make you Follow me and I will make you So God is a maker of men But he only makes those who follow Your assignment in the making of a witness Is to be an effective follower Praise the name of the Lord An effective follower Now please look up 
in making in building a believer to become a witness there is a system of growth and a system of building that that believer must submit to to be holistically built to stature enough to represent the purposes of the kingdom please listen it is important if you want to be used by god being available is wonderful but not sufficient you must be available and usable again available and usable to be available means you are yielded you are ready to serve his purposes to be yielded means you have been trained and equipped so here's how it works when god finds a man he calls that man your calling is not to ministry your calling is not to serve the purposes of god your calling is to god every time god called men he mandated that they follow him it is when you are sent that you are sent as a witness you are not called as a witness you are called as a follower a disciple are we together now just because you are called does not mean you are sent there are many people who are called but they are not yet sent you, your call can be genuine but you can send yourself into perdition into peril into failure hallelujah there is a spiritual system by which witnesses are trained and are built and we must learn how to submit ourselves to that system of making it's a painful process and it's a process that requires that you obtain staying power from god you must remain until the dealing is finished listen if you jump the school of the spirit if you jump classes in the school of the spirit the class that you jump you will pay for it with your failure in the future in the secular you can jump classes and read up during an exam and just write and pass but in the school of the spirit every class has a destiny implication and you must submit yourself one class can take you two weeks to complete another class can take you five years to complete are we blessed tonight the throne room gives us a picture of how things happen in heaven and everything in heaven as you know by now reflects god and different dimensions of him everything in heaven is a reflection of the glory of god the angels the living creatures the elders the splendor the excellence everything in heaven speaks of the glory of god and it's interesting that among the many features in heaven are a set of beings that the bible calls the four living creatures have you read that in scripture for a long time i wondered what those guys were doing in heaven there i presume that there may be a class of angels or cherubs as one of the accounts let us know that they are a class of cherubims but what they are there for exactly I didn't understand for a very long time revelation chapter 4 and verse 1 contained in the mystery of the four living creatures is the course curriculum of the training of witnesses if you understand the mystery of these creatures that stand before god then you will know how to stand before god as a faithful witness there is no record that the witnesses sit they always stand before god they present themselves before god revelation chapter 4 please we'll read verse 1 down to 7 please pay attention after this i looked and behold a door was opened in heaven the first voice which i heard was as it were of a trumpet talking to me which said come up hither and i will show you the things that must be after we're reading to seven verse two immediately i was in the spirit and behold a throne was set in heaven and one sat upon the throne three and he that sat was to look upon like jasper and studding stone and there was a rainbow round about the throne in sight like unto an emerald he's describing the throne now and round about the throne were four and twenty seats and upon the seats i saw four and twenty elders sitting 
clothed in white raiment, and they had on their heads crowns of gold. Verse 5 now. And out of the throne proceeded lightnings and thunderings and voices, and there were seven lamps of fire burning before the throne, which were the seven spirits of God. Verse 6 now. And before the throne there was a sea of glass like unto crystal, and in the midst of the throne and round about the throne were four beasts full of eyes before and behind seven the first of that beast or that creature was like a lion pay attention john is describing his sight now and the second beast was like a calf and the third beast had the face as a man and the fourth beast was a flying eagle ezekiel in chapter one had the same experience even though his description you know, there was a little difference, but basically he was talking about what we have come to know as the four living creatures. These four scriptures, these four living creatures were very, they were, they were interesting creatures. And for a long time it bothered me, what would these kinds of supposedly ugly creatures be doing before God? I thought there should be better creatures that should be looking at God. The elders were not even before him. But these four creatures, having the face of a lion for one, having the face of a calf for the other, having the face of a man, and then having the face of a flying eagle. And then I would later learn that those four living creatures represent the different dimensions that every believer must pass through in order to attain stature and maturity. Those four living creatures represent the school of the spirit. These are the dimensions that you must be trained in to be able to stand before God as a living witness and as a man of stature. We are talking about the making of witnesses. Number one, the face of the lion. The lion here very quickly talks about dominion and royalty. The Bible calls the lion the king among the animals that move on land. Are we together now? We'll just touch on it quickly and then we'll go to the core area we're dealing with tonight. Lion talks of dominion, talks of power talks of splendor so when you begin your dealing in the school of the spirit listen carefully you are exposed to your right in christ you are exposed to your authority in christ you get to understand that you are not a non-entity that you've been raised up with christ according to paul's gospel in ephesians that you have been made to sit with him you understand that you have exousia capacity to legislate on behalf of the parliament of heaven that is the face of the lion the training that cultures you into an understanding of dominion every believer who wants to be used by god as a witness you must be able to understand the dimension of the training that is represented in the face of a lion you must know who you are in christ you must know that you are not a victim of situations and circumstances that you have been exalted raised up with christ the bible says but if all you know is that you have been exalted in Christ, you have been raised, if that is all the dimensions you know, it will come with a side effect. The side effect is pride. The awareness of the kind of privilege and the kind of honor that God has given to you and just leaving it like that will end you in pride and in arrogance. So there are several people, I know who I am and you are right. But then you are wrong eventually. Because they do not know that authority in the kingdom has a purpose. Authority without a purpose would lead to destruction. You cannot invest so much power to men and women and not connect it to purpose. It is dangerous to empower people without giving them a purpose. So the face of the second creature, the calf, Luke chapter 22 for sake of time we'll read from verse 25 to 27 he lets you know the faith of a calf talks of servanthood a calf or an ox was used to plow the land 
Now when he teaches you that you are mighty, you are a king, you are a priest, you are not a non-entity, then he lets you know that the purpose of that authority is for service. Authority is not for self-aggrandizement, it's not for you stopping people, it's not for subjugating people, it's to be a servant and to serve the purposes of the kingdom. Luke 22, please, give us from verse 25. It says, and he said unto them, the kings of the Gentiles exercise lordship over them, and they that exercise authority upon them are called Benefactors 26 now it says but ye shall not be so but he that is greatest among you he will prove his greatness by being the younger and he that is chief as he that doth serve 27 for whether is greater he that seated at meat or he that serveth it's not he that seated at meat but I am among you Jesus said as he that serves. Everybody please say after me, the purpose of authority is for service. There are many believers with an imbalance of the idea of dominion. We are obsessed with dominion, but then that consciousness still destroys us because we do not know that the purpose of dominion and authority in the kingdom is for service. If the only thing you know is the face of the lion, you are in error. The imbalance that comes with the face of the lion is corrected by the face of the cow. So while I know that I'm a great man, I am anointed, I'm, I, I have power, I have dominion, I'm seated with Christ. Living that believer like that will lead to imbalance, it will lead to pride, like it's happening to many people in ministry, in business, etc., so he lets you know that you are a servant. That the reason why he gave you money, he gave you influence, he gave you a ministry, is to have the privilege and the honor of serving God's people. Ladies and gentlemen, believers, listen. You cannot tell the kind of honor and joy in my heart every week and every time I have the privilege, the rare privilege of serving you the truth of God's word. I have been doing this for many years and yet every week it is a privilege. It is for this cause that I travel around the nations, I travel around this nation and regardless of how stressful it is, I am motivated by the fact that as we continue to walk in the consciousness of this authority, this dominion power, we realize that just being a king without service makes you a wicked king and an irresponsible king. God demonstrated that he was king by showing us that he was Lord of the universe. But he came down and he served. If all you have is authority and dominion and you do not have the heart of a servant, you will not go far as far as being a witness is concerned. This is a principle that is true for ministry. It's a principle that is true for business. It's a principle that is true for government. The purpose of power is service. If you are unwilling to serve, there is no need looking for power. Are we together? The face of an ox. But then, like the lion, just knowing that you are a servant alone has its own side effect. The side effect is that you can serve and serve and men can take advantage of you because of your humility. People will use you. People will take advantage of you for their selfish reasons. And then he introduces the third phase that gives you balance. That even though you are a servant with so passionate love for people, you are human. The face of a man. Are we together now? The third phase lets you know it speaks about your humanity. John chapter 11 and verse 35. The Bible is not afraid to show us the humanity of Jesus. Read with me. Interesting, simple, but very deep. Ready to read? One, two, go. Change Jesus to life. Ready? One, two, read. Resurrection wept. The word of God wept. It is powerful to know 
that when he walked upon the earth as a man, he was not a superhuman. He was hungry and he let us know he was hungry. He cursed a tree because he wasted his time and did not give him food. The humanity of men. Follow me. You are a lion. You have dominion. You are one with Christ. Why have I been given that authority? The authority is given for service. But whilst you serve, you live in a world of men that is mad with selfishness. They will walk you out. They will kill you if need be. So he teaches you that whilst it is true you are a servant, you are human. It is okay to cry. Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 15, please. Are we learning something already? Hebrews 4 and verse 15. For we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmity. This is my definition of compassion. Compassion is the ability to be touched with the feelings of people's infirmity. The Bible says, but he was in all points tempted like us, yet without sin. So Jesus was a man. Hebrews chapter 2 from verse 16. Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 16, please. It says, for verily he looked not on him, he took not on him the nature of angels, but took on him the seed of Abraham. That means he came as a man. Wherefore, in all things it behoved him to be made like unto his brethren, that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining to God to make reconciliation for the sin of the people. Last verse. For in that himself had suffered being tempted, he is able to succor them that are tempted. Listen, your humanity is an advantage. It lets people to appreciate the all-surpassing power of God in you. You know, for a very long time in the body of Christ, especially, it has looked like an embarrassment for anointed people to reveal their human nature. And members are very wonderful but interesting people. Because they can look at you and say, I can't believe it. You are eating swallow. And you feel guilty for being human. They say, no, 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 no. I just uh, decided to break my fast of 500 days. Just for one day so I'll continue. What in the world is wrong with saying I am hungry? Honestly hungry while serving his purposes. And now, they wake you up by two or three. And say, wow, I'm disappointed. Why should I be sleeping and you're sleeping too? And you feel guilty, you apologize for sleeping. Many people have paid the price for strangling away their humanity. Jesus wept. Jesus was hungry. Jesus grew. Jesus was pained. Many people love Jesus because they don't know he was once human. Do you know why those who lived in his days hated him? Because he expressed his humanity very seriously. He entered the temple one time and he saw people exchanging and they were making money from the house of God. He did not go to the Roman government to say, look, I, I'm, I'm zealous, I came from heaven. Are you aware of that? The Bible says he was angry. He didn't say he was laughing and said, wow, I see uh, the zeal of the Lord ate him up. And he took a whip and whipped them. Hallelujah. Your humanity is a blessing. It makes people to be able to see you and know that truly there is an earthen vessel. It is the excellency of the power that is of God. Your humanity will give you balance. You know, I've shared my story here. Very, very funny. Years ago, I used to feel guilty. People would tell me, remember, Apostle, you were sent to us. You told us that God sent you to us. And I would feel guilty, sometimes tired and sleepy. And people would sleep, they would rest, they would refresh, then they would come and meet me and say, Look, I need counseling, I need this. And I've told them, God sent me to them. So one day, this deliverer, let me tell you where my deliverance happened. I entered a Catholic church. And you know they have a crucifix there and the Lord asked me to look at that crucifix I looked at it with passion and for the first time I fully realized that it was not me that died on that cross I am only a witness let me I will give you a scriptural proof of what I'm saying John chapter 1 please give us from verse 6 
John chapter 1. This is a deliverance for us. There was a man, even though he was sent from God, when he arrived the earth, he was a man. And his name was John. 7. The same came for a witness, to bear witness of the light that all men through his effective witness might believe. Here is a deliverance, verse 8. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness to that light. Yes, sir. You are not Jesus Christ. You are not the King of glory. You are one with Him. Your dominion is shared dominion, not absolute dominion. Please hear me. When you are tired, rest. When you are hungry, eat. When you are pain, cry. When you are happy, rejoice. The face of a man is also in the throne room. Please sit down. There are preachers who have gone through all kinds of things. Bereavements, issues with their families, and people look at them as though it's a sin to be human. And when you see the man of God crying in his office, what is happening? And he says, you cannot imagine we need one billion, five billion to complete this project. I don't even know where it's coming from. I am overwhelmed. And here you, you hear religious people. I'm disappointed. Have you forgotten that God is still God? Uh, is he not? No, 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 no. No. When people cry, don't be too quick to stop them. Jesus wept. Well. He didn't forget he was God when he was crying. Jesus had to query his father. Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani. I can't believe this. If men turn away from me, will you also turn your face? Jesus expressed his pain when he was on the cross. He said, I thirst. You thought you would just be hanging there and say you are wasting your time. When it's time to die, just take my life. No. You are royalty. The purpose of that authority is to serve. No matter how great you are, no matter how blessed you are, no matter how transformed you are, days will come in your life when your humanity will have to find expression. Maybe you may lose a loved one and for the first time, you find yourself silent. Listen to me. When you find people in that state, do not say, where is your God? Mm -mm. Hold your hands. And as you cry with them, let them know that everything is going to be alright. This is the definition of compassion. The ability to be touched. Don't go to a place where people are mourning the dead. And say, where is the dead body? Mm -mm. Don't act like that. Even if you want to raise the dead, comfort those that mourn first. Are we blessed? Our humanity. There are times when you may not be paid your salary. Four or five months. It is true that you are a man of faith. But right now you look at your children's school fees. You look at real issues before you. And there are times you can go to the place of prayer. And find yourself leaning on the window. And saying God. I don't know the name of what I am doing now. Don't tell me you will not feel it when you hear that you have lost your loved one. Don't tell me you will not feel it when you find out that your church is gradually declining. Don't tell me you will not feel it when sickness is eating up your body. And so, Job was a man who feared God and eschewed evil. But a time came he lost everything in one day. And then boils began to come out of his body. Even though Job said, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. But the time came, Job said, God, we need to talk. And God respected his desire and came. Can I tell you this? The God that we serve is a God that is mighty, but he is compassionate. As a leader, if you are only a lion, you are dangerous. You must be a lion that serves and yet you can connect to the humanity of men. This is the imbalance with the faith teaching. Listen, this man standing before you is a man of faith. But faith is not foolishness. Faith can cry. 
We will destroy the body of Christ if we strangle away the humanity of men just to show the excellency of the power of God. That's why the Bible left that scripture there. Jesus wept. When you stand and watch billions of naira and dollars born because something happened to your company, don't tell me you will just smile. Yes, you will still be glorified, but with tears in your eyes. Listen to me. There are many people who have gone through things. The making of a witness is a hard training. There are times as a man of God, you will be going through the same thing you are counseling others from. And God will never speak to you about your own issue. Yet when they come, here is the word of knowledge. You are prophesying. You are blessing people, they are increasing. And yet your life is not capturing that truth. And the call to ministry mandates that you remain true to the call. The face of a man. There are times you do not lock your door to pray. You lock your door and say, Father, I am here. And truly he comes. Once upon a time, I think this is just a story to express a point. I'm not sure it's a real story. A man was caught up to heaven. And he saw himself walking. He was shown a, you know, footsteps. And whilst he was going, he could see his footsteps and the footsteps of Jesus. Then he got to a point where he saw only the footsteps of one man. And then he said, Jesus, but you left me at this point. And he said, no, that was the point I carried you. The one footstep was me carrying you. Because at that point you gave up. Let me teach you something about Jesus. Your Jesus on his way to the cross. I hope you know if Jesus died on the ground, he could not become seen. The law is that you must die on a tree to be a cause. He had bled to a point where he had no strength because the life of the flesh. And then a time came, he fell with the cross. He was going to die on that ground there. Your Jesus needed a man to help him reach the cross. He was on his way to fulfill his own assignment. And somewhere along the line, even though he was the glorified Christ, he fell there. A 33 year old man, naked on the ground, was about to give up. And they called a young man called Simon of Cyrene. They said, Please help him carry that cross. Jesus did not say, No, 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 no. It's my business. Let me finish it. He said, Please, I need that help. And they carried it to the cross where he died. There are times you will need help in your life. Even though you are great, do not be afraid to be open for help. Financial help? Don't say I'm divine. My supply comes from heaven. Yes, sir. There are times you just have to be honest. Please help me. I'm in a faith in my spiritual work. I am still in the school of the spirit and I am not ashamed. There are many people who are sick. They secretly go and swallow drugs and come out and say for five years I've not taken any drug because they are conscious of being a lion. Doctors are not a cost to the faith life. They are a system of God's mercy. If you are sick, release your faith. You release your faith and it looks like things are not happening the way you want. Please don't wait until your health deteriorates and you die. Be honest enough to go to the hospital while still in the school of the spirit. God's ultimate is that we become fortified to a point that there may not be need for those things. But whilst you are on that journey, take advantage of the supplies that cater for your humanity. There are people today who have died the death of fools. Identifying and admitting their humanity would have saved them trouble. Witnesses. Witnesses are not spirits of God. They are men. It is just that they are of God. There are people today who in a bid to show the excellency of spirituality, have destroyed themselves. Can I tell you this? I'm not endorsing carelessness, but the body of Christ must be careful with this godlike expectation they have over men of God and leaders. Great men are men. The greatest and the best of us is still a man. 
There is, and, and I can tell you where that mistake came from. It came from us men of God. In a bid to show the excellency of the power of God, we feel ashamed of our humanity to our peril. If only you opened up your heart and let people know you needed help, you will be surprised how many people will be willing to help you. But when you let people know that you are God, you have so close a relationship with Him, they will leave you there and you get punished for not being trained using this third face. Again, the lion, royalty and power. Then a call to service the calf. But men will use you and strangle you. I told you here that a man of God, a father of faith in Enugu, he called me to his office after his conference. And he said, Apostle, please be careful. Africans kill their prophets. He's not being sarcastic. He's saying once people identify the grace of God upon your life, they will suck you dry, suck you dry. There are many people who are backslidden today because of ministry. They didn't have time for study again. 30 invitations in one week. And you keep working for God and stop working with God. It is okay that when people call you and say, what are you doing now? Are you praying or studying? No, I'm resting. What are you doing? I'm just having time with my family. Don't you love the kingdom again? Start your phone from those, those ignorant talk and focus on what God is giving you grace to do. Many, many great people today focus on building things and they left their family. They left the things that matter. Can I tell you this? I have learned by experience that only three things really matter in this life when all the stakes are down. Number one, your relationship with God. Number two, family. Number three, your assignment. End of discussion. There is nothing else that is worth dying for. Listen carefully. Your humanity was captured in the throne room. You can be tired. There are times you will need help. Yes, you are a man of faith. No matter how, even if a nurse and a midwife, no matter how professional she is, when it is time for her to give birth, she will need another midwife to also help her. Be careful when you reject the ministry of men. Accept and admit that you are human. Are we together now? There are many people today who cannot pay their rent. There are many people, I'm not teaching laziness, but I'm saying many people's breakthrough would come cheaply if only they would open up their hearts to say they are men. How are you feeling today? Great and excellent. Why are you crying? Oh, don't worry. This is the day the Lord has made. It's all right. You are speaking faith. But when you are with someone who can help you, what is happening? Look, I had a quarrel with my wife this morning. Can we stand in faith and agree? Ah! Man of God, you wrote five books on marriage and this is what is happening. No. 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 Listen, I'm not saying this to be sarcastic. You have to be very careful. Otherwise, men will push you to a point where your life will become a disaster. Listen to my teaching why revivals die. There is only one reason why revivals die. The humanity of men. Jesus wept. Jesus was hungry. There is a godlike expectation that people bring on leaders and it's wonderful we must rise to points where our lives are models enough but we must be careful in the midst of that we are men so you see a man driving his son to school and someone looks at him ah emoji you are driving your son to school and he says from today driver will drive my child after five years the child is closer to the driver than the father because he is doing ministry and the consciousness of being a lion will not allow him to connect with his child. By the time the child becomes a teenager, he calls his father uncle. Because he says, you don't have a stake in my life. You did not invest in that relationship. 
Is God helping us? Yes, sir. We are men. We have needs. You need money for school. You need a house. You need a sense of progress. Do not just spiritualize everything and turn it down. There are times that even the great cry. And when those moments come, cry with honor. Someone lost a lot of money, I think early this year or so, and he called me. He said, Apostle, I cannot imagine. What is the meaning of this? The Bible says the steps of a good man are the ace. Please, leave all that thing. Let me talk to you. There is something called failing forward. There is failure as an event and failure as a person. Are we together now? If a plane is moving forward and you get up from your seat and go backward, are you going backward? That's how failure is while you are growing. Even though you left your seat in the plane, the overall plane is still moving and you will eventually arrive at your destination. The area where we need to address especially this humanity is the issue of sickness. I can tell you this. There is a theology that if we do not balance will destroy the body of Christ. I'm not teaching weakness. I am a man of faith. I've enjoyed the grace of God. There are certain things you cannot pretend about with my kind of schedule. I just returned from Port Harcourt. I have meetings back to back up until Thursday. So I'm standing here. I'm not pretending it to you. But let me tell you this, we have to be very honest. It is true that we are people of faith. But by the time you are 50 years, 60 years, biologically speaking, you may not have the kind of strength that you had when you were a teenager running around again. There is need to redefine the way you do ministry. But if all you know is being a lion, save Johnny. Do not let experience teach you. It can be a very bad teacher. Are we blessed? The face of the lion, royalty, dominion. The face of the calf, servanthood. A call to serve with humility and meekness. But whilst you serve, no when far becomes too far. It is okay to say, hold on please. Let me rest. I am a man. Being a man is good. But like the three faces... There is also a limit to it. Because your consciousness as a man. Many of you are happy now that I said I'm a man. You are happy that I said we are humans. So that when you don't pray, you say that after all, apostle said I'm a man. You don't fast. That level of carelessness will tell on your spiritual life in a way you are not prepared for. So there is a balance. The last face. The face of the flying eagle. The flying eagle means you are divine. And there, there is a system of restoration where you, it talks about the duality of your nature. It never said the eagle. It said the flying eagle. The eagle that lives both on land and in air. It reminds you that even though you are human, the presence of the Holy Spirit has created an advantage that you are natural, but you can be supernatural. Are we together now? Yes. It said that the eagle, when the eagle wants to renew its strength, it will rise to a high altitude. When the feathers are old, I learned that from the book, The Spirit of Leadership, by my greatly revered mentor in life and in death, Dr. Miles Munro, that the eagle would rise to a high altitude. And be there for a very long time. It would defeather itself. And shed off the old feather. And survive the cold. At that altitude. Until a new feather begins to come. And then when it is fit. It doesn't just fly. It soars. Soaring means that it will study the current of the wind. And it will follow it. Listen to me. It is true that we are humans. But God did not leave us to our humanity. There is a divine component. I will not leave you comfortless. So he gave us the Holy Spirit. In the midst of pain, you can find strength. In the midst of stress, you can be renewed. So it, it's not an endorsement to just be happy about your humanity and to leave it there. The balance to it is that you are divine.
It is this divine nature that made the patriarchs of old to stand even at the face of death. And even though naturally their humanity should strip them with fear, but they did not denounce Christ. An energy that the men who killed them could not explain where it came from. The eagle. They stood until death. You read about the martyrdom of most of the apostles of the Lamb. Some were turned upside down. Some were, were hung and killed in transverse sessions. And they stood. Can I tell you this? If you realize that you are divine, that even though I am a human, yes, this is the man, Joshua Selman, but there is his divine power that can come upon us. It is with that power we can heal the sick. It is that power that grants us the grace that even though we are humans, we can comprehend truth at a level and a dimension that is not given to ordinary men. The excellency of the power, the workings of His grace in our lives will clearly show that even though we are human, we are divine. This is why ordinary people can build supernatural things. Businesses, ministries. This is why although we are humans, I can speak to you and say in the name of Jesus, may the spiritual climate over you change and it will change. Because I am not alone and I am not all human. There is a divine component. The Bible calls it that treasure that is in earthen vessel. So don't move around just saying I'm human and allow sickness to ravage you and allow failure to defeat you and allow the vicissitudes of life to beat you down. There is an advantage that we have in this kingdom of light. We are royalty, kings and priests, the lion. We are servants, serving nation and serving the kingdom with all our hearts. We are humans. We can go through the things that happen to men. There are battles, but we will never be defeated because there is the face of the flying eagle. Listen to me. You want to be able to stand before God as an effective witness. You must pass through this school of the spirit where you are taught how to be a lion royalty. You are taught how to be a servant, the calf. You are taught how to maximize your humanity, a man. And then you are taught the reality of your oneness with the Holy Spirit that culminates to your divinity. When you are done with this body of knowledge, you are ready to be sent. He can send you to the field and you will go and stand on a crusade ground and the first thing people see is your humanity. And they look at you and say, what is this? It never, well, before people really got to know me the way they know me today, um, every time we travel to a region, especially if that's my first time, usually there will be an array of protocol, different people waiting to receive Joshua Selman. And so when I arrive, most times I used to wear jeans and a polo, just listening with my earpiece, listening to worship or something. And as soon as we come down from the plane, you see the people looking around, where is he? Sometimes they come and meet my protocol, no, you see the one, they meet a few people. Then when they find out I'm the one, you can see the sheer disappointment on their face. This is what we were waiting for, for two hours. And then I smile back at them, let's go to the crusade ground. You are only seeing a man, but I'm not only a man, there is a flying eagle. This gives you confidence. So people don't bully you because of your humanity. Royalty. Service. Your humanity. Your divinity. All of these dimensions must be captured in your life to present the holistic picture of the Christ. This is why the four living creatures stand before the throne. They reflect who God is. That he is royalty. He came to serve. He came as a man. But he is the Christ. Now look at your life. And your area of training with the spirit. You will find out that for many of us. You have only been training. Allowing God to train you as lion. You bully everybody. You shout. Someone says look I think I um, is it that your leg? No, 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 don't talk, don't talk to me like that. I'm, I'm, I'm a lion. And there are people who would never accept any good thing. I'm a servant. God blesses them, they reject it and cast the blessing. 
They need it, but they reject it. They call their service humility, and that may be true. But eventually, they find out that their humanity catches up with them. Is that true? Yes. And then for those who are human, find out that they are reduced from that realm of royalty and power, and they become beggarly, because they have allowed the elements, the vicissitudes of life, they have justified the fact that every failure is permitted in their life. After all, I am human. So he brings you the balance that you are divine. You are divine. We will rise in your name. I don't know. You reign no We will rise in your name. I don't know. You reign no now please very quickly let's discuss a few things we have to pray so you understand that in the making of believers there are things that you must pass through this is what you learn in the cave of Adullam it's not an empty lecture it's a lecture that will move you from face to face this way you will be an effective witness whether in ministry, in career, whatever it is you can be a billionaire CEO and watch one of your staff crying and you don't look at them and say you don't cry in this corporation no because you were trained as a man you can say come she's surprised my boss that exalted man is now giving me audience because you were trained well you can be a ceo and one day you will come and meet your least staff the security man and say you know what I just came from my office to tell you happy birthday and the man wants to run away. I can't believe this. My CEO who is busy up there has the touchfulness to tell me happy birthday because you were trained. And then just when he wants to trivialize you, he sees an, an entourage of people who come to remind him that that man who was a man is also a lion. The lion the calf, the man, the eagle. One more time. The lion, the calf, the man, the eagle. Let's do it for the last time. The lion, the calf, the man. So you carry this consciousness. Go back home. And when you see someone who has remained a man for too long, you tell him, look. I have cried with you, but it's time to clean your tears. The Holy Spirit did not leave us comfortless. Don't dwell in your humanity for too long. It's time to rise and extend and become an eagle. When you see someone who continues to excuse failure in his life, you can literally look at a believer and diagnose what is missing in his life immediately. When you see someone with pride, most likely you know what is missing now good students when you see a man of God bragging on stage and saying all kinds of things you know what to pray for for him now you don't look down on him but you can go back and say Lord I'm seeing only a lion here he has not learned that the purpose of honor and authority is for service when you see someone who is serving as if he will die you are seeing death near him you know what to tell him Mr. Man rest rest when you see someone who is just carnal around speaking as if he's not born again all these faith people faith 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 we are humans a luta continua victoria is scatter you say hey you've gone too far in this kingdom we are divine we are in every way supernatural listen to me this is this is this is this is a discipleship class Building you to touch up and balance. So, you can teach on faith this week. And yet you are attending a burial next week. And you don't feel guilty for being there. People look at you and say, ah, you are in this burial. And you say, well, I was just passing and the Holy Ghost told No, 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 no. You came for a burial because you are a responsible shepherd over people. I have to move to something else. 
Now write this down please everybody Our corporate mandate Our corporate mandate We are dealing with Part 2 now proper You won't believe that everything I am doing is tying up part 1 Part 2 we, we have a corporate mandate Please pay attention We have a corporate mandate There are two people the power of God is coming on right now I just saw light Just leaving me no, you don't have to stand. Just two people. I just wanted to help them. I just saw that light. There is, there is a season of dealing. While I was talking about these four faces, some of you, you are still in that class, that school of the Spirit. And God just wants to give you a witness this night that He's with you through these seasons of training. Two people. The power of God, I just saw come on them. They are within this place. In the name of Jesus, I decree and declare. Right now, please help them by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Fear not, God is training you. Fear not, God is building you. Isaiah 43 and verse 1 and 2 says, Fear not, I have redeemed you. I have called you by name, you are mine. It says, When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. Through the rivers, it will not consume you. And when you walk through fire, it will not consume you. I bring you a word of comfort by the Spirit. Pass through the school of the Spirit. There is a making that you are going to. In the end of it, you will become a witness indeed. Ordained. God will legitimize your operation and you will do much for the kingdom. Our corporate mandate. Write this down, please. Now, please look up. The word gospel means news, good news, a declaration. And for you to understand our corporate mandate as believers, you must understand the gospel. Very quickly, there's a separate series on kingdom advance that we'll deal with later on. But now, just to touch on it, we have the gospel is twofold. Please look up. Please look up. Lend me your attention. The gospel is twofold. The first dimension of the gospel affects the hearts of men. The second dimension of the gospel affects systems and structures. The first dimension of the gospel is a message that saves. The second dimension of the gospel is a value system that transforms. We must embrace these two sides of the gospel to be able to transform society. Now I'm teaching you in this section the keys that make for transforming society, for nation building. Can I tell you this? This is not just a message for believers. It's a message that captures in it the ingredients to change states, to transform nations, and to transform territories. There is the dimension of the gospel as a message that saves. The jurisdiction of that dimension of the gospel is the hearts of men. The gospel as the message that saves. What is it? It is the revelation of the Father's love. Listen carefully. Revealed in and through the substitutionary sacrifice of Jesus. That means the Father commended His love towards mankind and creation by sending Jesus. Jesus came as an expression of that love. The love was targeted primarily to man, being the zenith of His creation, but then by extension to the entire creation. Are we together now? The revelation of the Father's love Revealed in and through the substitutionary sacrifice of his son Jesus. The object of that love being man and then creation by extension. To the intent that if they understand that sacrifice and they believe that report, they become recipients of the life of God. What the Bible calls eternal life is the way. So here's how the Bible puts it. For God so loved the world. That he gave his then, at that time, he was his one and only begotten. He's no longer his one and only begotten. Today he's the firstborn of we the begotten. Are we together now? But at that time he gave his one and only begotten son. To the end that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have life everlasting. This is important. So that is the dimension of the gospel that saves. By believing that message, the message of the substitutionary sacrifice of Christ, his death, his burial, his resurrection, you don't stop there. His ascension and his exaltation. 
the gospel of salvation does not stop with resurrection. He did not just resurrect and went to the air. He got to heaven, performed his high priestly duty, and he was enthroned and sat at the right hand of God the Father. That's his current position today. So the journey starts with heaven, the throne of God. He left it and came as a baby, passed through the womb of a virgin, walked the earth for 30 years, performed the ministry for three and a half years. He died as an exchange and brought many sons to glory. Resurrected and is today seated. When you believe that report, you are a recipient of God's life. You are a recipient of God's spirit. Are we together? But for a very long time, Africa, listen to me. For a very long time, this is the only dimension of the gospel that we have focused in. The missionaries, when they came in from the West, they were sincere people. I had the honor and the privilege a few weeks, about two weeks ago, to be at the first cathedral and the oldest cathedral in this nation. I had the honor and the privilege of seeing the instruments that were used by Bishop Samuel Ajayi Crowder. It was such a time to connect to history. I had the honor of seeing his bishop chair that was 150 years old. I'm not ignorant as far as church history is concerned by the grace of God. I can tell you that the reason why our society is the way it is is because we paid attention to one side of the gospel and we did not bring that balance. We paid attention to the message and we ignored the value system. The message only affects the hearts of men. It is the value system that affects society. So we find out that men are saved, but the society is not safe. We have a corporate mandate. A twofold mandate. Please write it down. The first mandate that every true witness has, the first mandate that every true witness has is to establish the Lordship of Jesus Christ in the hearts of men. To establish the Lordship of Jesus Christ in the hearts of men through this spiritual agency that the Bible calls the Gospel. The first corporate mandate of every witness, regardless geography, is to establish the Lordship of Jesus Christ across the hearts of men. And the instrument that we use according to scripture to make that a reality is the preaching of the gospel of salvation. How shall they be here except there be a preacher? How can the preacher come except he be sent? How beautiful are the feet of them that take good news. We must be definite about evangelism. Another name for what you just wrote. Evangelism is the key to global harvest. And by the grace of God, for as long as there is breath in us, we will see that in our lifetime, that we bring many to the cross, many to Jesus, they will come to the saving knowledge of Jesus. As a CEO, as a man of God, as a medical doctor, as a family man, you know that regardless the geography of your assignment, we are coming there. That ultimately, your first corporate mandate as a witness, as the universal church, the ecclesia, we have the assignment to ensure that Christ is enthroned in the hearts of men. This is why we continue to strive day and night to see that the gospel penetrates everywhere. This is why people pay millions of naira to see that crusades are held. This is why people make tracts. This is why people send missionaries to the end that this mandate be achieved. And in the name of Jesus, we will not fail. Not in our lifetime. Again, I repeat, in the name of Jesus, we will not fail. The second corporate mandate that we have. Corporate mandate means regardless of what you are called to do. This is ultimately where your attention should be. Number two. To establish the Lordship of Jesus Christ across every strata of human activities. To establish the Lordship of Jesus Christ across every strata of human activities. 
That means to infiltrate systems and structures with the value system of the kingdom. Listen to me. The value system of the kingdom does not profit Christians alone. There are people who are watching me now. There are Muslims, there are non-Christians, there are other religions from across the world. The gospel that we teach, the truths that we communicate are not for Christians. They are for the entire creation of God. Are we together? So there is the message that saves. There is the value system that transforms. Every society is a reflection of the degree to which it has embraced the value system of the kingdom or otherwise. So you can find a territory that has rejected the message but embrace the value system. You see it in their technological advancement. You see it in a very low crime rate. You see that corruption is minimized. These are all the value systems of the kingdom. You don't have to be a Christian to embrace the value system of the gospel. It is the strategy that makes a society civil. It is the strategy that, that when, you, when you deploy the value system of the kingdom in leadership, in governance, in nation building, you will build a dexterous and transformed society. What is the tool that is used to achieve this? Influence. Write it down. Influence is the name given to the key that enthrones Christ within systems and structures. Evangelism is the key that enthrones Christ in the hearts of men. But influence is the strategy that enthrones Christ across systems and structures. Please write that word down and underline it. We are having some time to study. We are going to pray. What is influence? Two definitions, very quickly. Please write down. Don't be tired. Don't be tired of writing. You are learning by knowledge shall the just be delivered. Hallelujah. Influence, write it down please. Influence is the capacity to have an effect on the mindset, the beliefs, and the convictions of a person and a territory. It's called influence. The capacity to have an effect on the mindset, the beliefs and the convictions of a person and a territory is called influence. Second definition. Let me repeat the first very quickly. I'm rushing because there is still an aspect we must touch this night by God's grace. Influence is the capacity to have an effect on the mindset, the beliefs, the convictions of a person and then a territory. Let me give you the second definition. This is my definition of influence. Influence is the ability to compel men to buy into your convictions without using force or cruelty. The ability to compel men, all and sundry, to buy into your convictions without the use of force or cruelty is called influence. That means... If I make you, I sell my belief system by the dexterity of the results that that belief system commands. It compels you to buy into my belief system. I have influenced you. Listen to me. Christ will never be enthroned in our nation, in Africa, across systems and structures if we reject influence. For a very long time, we have marketed a gospel of spirituality that is good but incomplete. We have rejected influence to our peril. So the average believer right now is under situations and circumstances, territorially speaking. Read your Bible and see the power of influence. When the right people are the gatekeepers of systems and structures, then Christ can be enthroned. Notice my choice of words. The right people, not religious people, not fanatics. In fact, not even just Christians. It takes more than a Christian to transform society. It takes a witness. There are many Christians who have assumed positions 
they use that badge of Christian and God there and continue to mess up because they have not embraced the value system of the kingdom. We only trust witnesses in this kingdom. A witness is one who has passed through this school of the spirit. A witness is one who is governed by the fear of the Lord, conscience and posterity. Is God speaking to us? Please look at me. I made up my mind as a man of God that by the grace of God, I will never raise the people who just know God and love God. By the grace of God, I believe in influence. Every influential person is welcome to my life. I don't drive them away. I don't join this ignorant talk that people say, this is how we, we drive people who should, we should be there for. We have driven politicians. We have driven business people away. We have driven captains of industry. No one to mentor them, to help them, to correct them. We leave them to continue to mess up and we complain. The formation is always king, priest, prophet. The captains of industry can go, but behind them are priests and prophets that can speak the counsel of God, not for the purpose of money. Until we restore the order of king, priest, prophet, our society cannot be transformed. Please listen very carefully. Evangelism and influence, therefore, are the power keys that are responsible for enthroning Christ and his purposes, first in the hearts of men and then across every strata of human activities. What happens when Christ is enthroned in a territory? Number one, his value systems are honored. The people within that defined territory live by his value system. It is a beautiful thing to see the value system of the kingdom honored. That way you will see that crime will reduce. Why? Because there is an effective management of resources. The leaders come. There are people who are governed by conscience, posterity, the fear of the Lord. Let me tell you this. Regardless of whether you are a Christian or not, you can embrace the value system of the kingdom. A value system that is referenced from scripture. And you can defend it. As a built a nation. This is not some fanatism about Christians. No. We are advocates of truth. We are passionate. Even about nation building. So whilst on one hand. We are committed to helping to see that Christ is enthroned in the hearts of men. We cannot be deaf. And dumb. And blind. Over the state of nation. When Jesus came, everywhere the gospel was embraced, the territory also grew. The territory became a witness that the value system of the kingdom works. When Jesus walked upon the earth, he began to teach what we call the Beatitudes. He gathered 5,000 men regardless of their practice and he began to teach them the modus operandi of the kingdom, the value system of the kingdom. It is the value system of the kingdom that will restore honor and dignity and productivity. It is the value system of the kingdom that will cause young men to not trivialize the sacrifice of the elderly. It is the value system of the kingdom that will teach young people that money is not the only thing needed to respect people. The value system of the kingdom. Are we blessed? Is the value system of the kingdom that will make a young man to prepare to leave his father's house. The moment he finds out he's responsible, he must be prepared to get out of that place and go and be responsible. Not to be 40, 50 years in his father's house, complaining and stealing money and living there. He has not embraced the value system of the kingdom. Because if you know God well and you understand his system, God is a God of portions. It is not God's desire that you starve forever. As far as family and other things are concerned, a time will come, your portion will be given to you also. Is God helping us tonight? Please look up. I presume that most of us here have allowed the gospel as the message that saves. There is almost no one here who will necessarily fight the Lordship of Jesus. There are thousands who are following by television, thousands who are following online and most of them have come into that point 
where you believe that Jesus is Lord, I congratulate you. Evangelism remains our pursuit in life and in death. However, the gospel as a message that saves works on the hearts of men, but it does not automatically transform society. We need to reintroduce to the body of Christ the correct concept of kingdom influence. Influence. Imagine with me if Michael Jackson ever said, I love Jesus. I assure you that one statement would probably win more souls than many crusades put together. Why? Because he has sustained through mastery, through competence, through his results. He has given himself a niche as far as the table of greatness is concerned. And on the strength of that exalted platform, there are many people who can buy into his ideologies. Pray in the Spirit in one minute as we delve to the last section. Our lives are changing by the power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. God bless you. Please write this down very quickly. Now, we want to discuss the geography and the jurisdiction of witness. We have understood that we are witnesses to the degree to which we validate the claims of Jesus and we become promoters of his message and his ideology. We have also understood the dimensions of the gospel that make for the change of state in a man's heart, his reconnection to the Lord, to the Lord who is Christ, and then the value system that transforms society. The jurisdiction, write this down please, the jurisdiction of your witness is determined by three factors. The jurisdiction. Now we want to talk about the allocation. How do I know where I've been called to serve the purposes of God? It's called the jurisdiction of your witness. You don't just guess where you want to serve the purposes of God. There are divine allocations and I want to show you now. Number one. The first way you understand the geography and the jurisdiction of your witness is through your abilities. Write it down, please. Your abilities are a secret code given by God to help you know your place of witness. Your abilities talk of your potentials. They talk of your giftings. Please look up. When you see me hold a syringe and a stethoscope, what would be your guess about who you think I am? So those tools can suggest. You can't call me a carpenter with a stethoscope. And if you see me with nails, wood, and a hammer, what does that suggest? So your giftings and your abilities are pointers to the geography of your witness. The jurisdiction and the geography of your witness are determined by number one, your abilities. And that includes your potential and your giftings. Number two, your passion and your pain. Together, your passion and your pain are power keys that help to show you your place of witness. Wow. So your passion is not a waste and your pain is not a waste. Can I tell you this? The most dominant pain in your life is a direction to where you will be a savior also. In fact, part of the requirement to be a savior is that systems will be created around your life to pass through and connect to the people and with the situations you'll be delivering people from. It, you ask those who work for instance in the healing anointing they will tell you there are people who at one point or the other have had to suffer infirmity so when they stand before people there is a memory bank from whence the anointing can come strong from we do not become witnesses in innocence no there is a requisite level of passion and pain Pain is a gift if you truly understand it. 
So someone who was raised alone without a father, without a mother, had to push through. Understands the pain of growing without mentors. Had to survive all kinds of temptations. When that person sets up an NGO to raise other people and to mentor young people, you see, the person you will see at work there did not just come because of a search for money or fame. It came because of there is a history that supports and sponsors that person. Show us the ancient past. Will you lead us along? Eternal highway, we want to follow the ways of Jesus. Listen, do you know many times when you survive your seasons of pain, you don't come out with results alone, you come out with an anointing to deliver people who pass through the same thing. Every time you are coming out of seasons in your life, don't just jump out. Ten years of poverty and hardship and you just came out. You didn't just come out. 